Now we've got this actually, this Urkin brand here, I painted this in a YouTube Live a while back. I think that was maybe over the winter time. <sighs> I'll get some of the dust off of him there. And I thought, well, we can do some fun things maybe with this cloak. We do have some freehand options here. Not quite so much because of the way this is all folded over here. And I thought this could be very fun. We'll give this one a shot, see what happens with that. Now let's see if we can grab some of our guys here that we've already done with the Unsullied. So you can see we did the whole Sky Earth, now Metallica on the shield. We had fun with the, the swords, the helmets, all this sort of stuff. And we'll keep going with that on these guys too. And we'll start it off with the same sort of preparation glaze as we call it. By the way, you can watch these guys on the... I think now, yeah, they're highlights now. So they used to be VODs, and now they're highlights, and you can pretty much watch the entire session if you want to on how we did that. We're going to do some more of that. We also might do a few more touches here on our on our Kamul the Easterling. Yes, big part of my Easterling army. Love this guy. He has done some good work. He's done some really good work for the army, too. I have to say that. Now, I think we did these, yeah, we did these, uh, oh my gosh, I think it was maybe Saturday, something like that, uh, whenever it was, I don't know. But we finished those off a couple days ago, and they're, they're dry enough. I just wanted to show that, yes, you can put something like this over the top. So say we all. Uh oh, well, we almost lost track of. Oh, but there he is. He's ready for that. He's ready. He's going to grab it. And there's a tier three, folks. That's a tier three. That Well, that deserves the last of this, too. Right there, a toast for the host, quite literally. So, how are you doing? I, wow, this is probably one of the few times I've actually maybe started when I intended to. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at this. So, basically, what I'm going to put over. I keep wanting to call him Karin the Betrayer. Not quite sure what. Oh, hey, Bethany, how are you doing? So pretend you don't see this because there's there's no object source lighting. But, well, here, this this is a safer way to see it. Just wanted to show you how not shiny that is. So if you're using some of these oil paint colors that maybe have a bit of a shine to them. So you got, you know, something like this going on. It seems a wee bit shiny. Well, that's where this stuff comes in. So how are you doing, Bethany? Is, is Roy here? Hey, Roy. Oh, Roy, I saw your, your post there. Those, uh, you definitely have some large-scale things underway, that's for sure. Oh, my goodness. And is this, the, is this the thing right here? No, this is not the one I want you guys to see. Is it this one? Nope, that's not the one. I'm just looking around here. I think this might be... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of oil paints, now look at this. See what's going on? Look at, look at that nifty shifty stuff going on check that out yeah because now this video is uh, of course that screen is now blocked it's almost done rendering this so this is the newest army painting series right here I quite literally just finished again this is maybe going to rend finish rendering in the next oh i don't know 10 minutes or so oh hey not jay how are you doing hey up uh, when did uh when did uh, when did he get those buildings? Because I saw not Jay's place, in addition to, you know the all the other buildings. So you actually have a building named after you. That's pretty cool. So yeah, this is the newest series here. And man, this was so much fun. I mean, I had a ton of fun doing this. Now this is that that color shift stuff here. So let's see how that uh, is kind of changing. This is the color shift blue. We mixed it with some of the purple. See how that's kind of shifting around? Look out, it's, it's blue here, and then it's almost kind of red there. Check that out. That's pretty neat stuff. Obviously, doing this with the oils here. Now, we're just going to take our Army Painter Anti-Shine. We're just going to take whatever, just any old blister pack like this. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, Roger, how are you doing? Oh, uh, he got this past Tuesday. Okay. I was I was wondering when he got those things. 
Oh, hey, Lady Dyer. How are you doing? Oh, hey, Quills. Quills in the house. Yeah, folks, sorry I haven't been able to do more of these this week. It's just been, there has been a lot of mayhem this week. So wasn't quite able to do all the kind of streams that I want. So so not Jay. Has, have you guys recovered from the 24-hour stream from Rocky's War Room there? So yeah, there's there's Rocky's place. What were some of the other? There was a, one other building too, besides Rocky's place and not Jay's place. So what we'll do is we'll hit this real quick here, and then you'll see the difference. And this is just the Army Painter anti shine. It's the same exact stuff you'd use on your regular, just any old acrylic painted miniature, whatever. That's what's sweet about it, is that there doesn't have to be a difference. Uh, let me see. Hey, Pun Expected, how are you doing? Uh, we're already planning for, for much to do it again. Well, I, I know you guys were debating what day of the week it would be and when it would start. There, there was a big debate there. Well, in addition to the Lord of the Rings debate and some of the other debates within debates that happen. Then we're going to hit this cloak here too. Again, what this will do, same thing that it did on the because if you remember you know, these guys here that red had a bit was shiny it was just sometimes the certain colors have more shine than others and you can tell it really killed the shine on the red that was super shiny not shiny anymore and, you know you don't have to put this stuff on i wouldn't necessarily put it on immediately as soon as it feels dry maybe i give it a day or two longer but I've had no no problems putting this stuff on. All right, so and actually, not Jay is going to speaking of people that are going to recognize these. Not Jay is going to recognize these. So March sixth, Saturday, Saturday to Sunday. So pun expected. How are you doing too? And this is another one where some of the colors that I was using just by their nature have a little bit of shine to them so what we're gonna do is we'll just hit them with this stuff and then as we're working on our other things well guess what we'll just check in with these guys and we'll see just what they look like now if you remember the stuff that we were painting with uh, the 3d printed stuff and that had more tooth to it and the paint just was not, it didn't matter what color we were using, it was not as shiny. Uh, let's see, try both Gamvar and Vallejo stain, stain and matte varnish. I don't know, both work just fine. The Gamvar being a little sticky, if it isn't thin enough, looks better than the Vallejo. Now, uh, oh, thanks, not Jay. What's interesting about this is that it actually starts out clear. Because every other one, like the Vallejo one, they, they start out like Elmer's glue. And when they get, in what universe is this a good idea that your supposedly clear varnish or whatever starts out looking like Elmer's glue? And not even bare, like watered down Elmer's glue is what it looks like to me. And we were just, well, okay, this is what people use. I guess we have to use it. Somehow we stumbled across the Army Painter Annie Shine. It was years ago, too. All right. That's better. So we got these couple of guys here. And again, as you can tell, we've got our, our red shields for Urkin Brand going here. So we got another guy that we might play around with here. This is also, just wanted to show you what happens when you do your pre-glaze and then you get taken away from that project for months on end. Like this was April or something. Actually, I think it was when I was... Uh, Maybe painting some other stuff. Ah, oh, look at that. That's already really whacked some of the shine on that. Man, has that made a big difference. Oh, I think I forgot the sword here. Huge difference. Man. It also makes things darker slightly, which is kind of crazy. Oh, hey, Maglu, How are you doing? Artisan Guild made the Ten Heroes Bundle part there. Ah, and it includes the spell brush. It includes him. Yes, indeed. That's what he says. He's like, nobody can take me down. Nobody can take me. He's like, whoa. <laughs> the Rookin Brand says, nope, this here's mine. Uh, let's see. Does the Army Painter anti shine? Good protective cone. Oh, actually, well, here's the. It actually does do a, a good protective coating.
but the nice thing is you can just brush this on so this is a 365 days a year anti-shine instead of the spray I would never get the spray stuff I know they have this in spray no way I would get that in spray now hey Achilles yeah this was this was a very not good week here unfortunately so that is why I was kept away plus I was also doing a lot of filming so I, basically I stopped filming this one at 5 o'clock this morning I believe yeah somewhere around 5 o'clock this morning so about 12 hours now 13 hours ago I was filming this this is uh, the new patreon page figure right here, well army painting series let's see do I have the yeah, the basing episode is already people have seen that one already well at least I hope they have but doing this with the oils was a lot of fun and we also tried our new interference blue here there it is so we gave this thing a shot and it was certainly interesting no doubt about that and you can't really tell what it looks like in the container it just, you can actually see a little bit of weird pink stuff going on there but that's that's pretty freaky I think you can see it down in the, the corner of the palette there oh hey Nosferatu how you doing and ugly is in the house too uh, let me see and a shork yeah a shork that was uh, it was kind of fun because I'd never been able to do let me see if ah here they are it's been so long since I had a chance to do something like this on a base so yeah see that dude right there I remember they had a bunch of vampire counts so that was really fun and we did that to, oh yeah yeah here's another one it's been years I'm talking years since I had a chance to do this and I actually hadn't painted any kind of skeletal stuff like this since the since the Tomb Kings a long time ago, like seven years ago so yeah we had a blast just putting some shields on bases and some of the extra skulls and that sort of stuff and we use those green stuff world texture sheets there I mean it's it's kind of natural <laughs> looks very natural there and angry ham how are you doing so the interference paints we first used these years ago in acrylics basically this is a color shift paint just you hear all about the the turbo doric and everybody else has those color shift paints this is the oil painting version I believe they've got green red this and like a purple I think there's maybe four of these guys so I tried that for the first time and that was a lot of fun oh, let's get uh, numsco was able to ah buy the one true brush but in the store sometimes they're hard to find in the store because they kind of put them in weird places but there's your there is your one true brush in the blue handles we got a sky king in the house too how are you doing let's let's just try doing a little pre-glaze right here I'm gonna get a couple of other colors going out here but I need to refill a whole bunch of these guys there's a bunch of these that are just looking a little peaked here where's my yeah Van Dyke Brown here oh let's see Nut J it's your best uh, starting point for oh look at this look who's look who's in the house literally in the house I mean she well I hope she's in the house because otherwise she'd be on the phone out on the front step so not J one second let me get this for you here this is what I started with years ago just a set of ten of these guys look at how much is left and I you know me I work with these a whole bunch this was I don't know, people have found this for as little as 22 bucks on Amazon so this is definitely the way to go start with something like that and then you can get this on Amazon or get it from Michaels or Hobby Lobby you get yourself this high quality odorless paint thinner you're gonna want that because it, it's actually it's good for the paint to use the, the nasty stuff the cheap nasty stuff it's just gonna destroy your paint and that's just that's not gonna help you very much so let's do a little bit of pre-glazing here speaking of thinner now we're not going to put a ton of thinner into this remember we've been using less and less and less it does help a little bit it helps get that paint moving of course let's get this paint moving here 
we got a little bit of our ivory black we'll throw out a little bit of our indigo I don't know ex if they ever actually said in the books what color horse Urkin brand rode I'm assuming not white because that would be snowmane and we know who's riding that uh, let me see oh no problem Now, let's, you know what, what the heck, we're actually going to throw just for funsies, and we started doing this, we started doing this with the Tomb, King, Tomb Kings, the Ossiarchs as well, throw in a little bit of, well, maybe a semi-opaque color into that pre-glaze too. So we have, if any of our Lord of the Rings experts somehow have any knowledge of what, horse Urkin Brand Road. If if he very ever even mentioned that. I don't know if he did. Otherwise we'll just we'll give him some sort of I don't know, maybe a maybe a darker colored horse instead of always just the lighter color. Oh I mean I think we're all set up on chit chats there. Let's get a little bit of burnt umber going here and the umber we respected the umber for sure on our Ossiaric series. Keep wanting to say Tomb Kings. Basically, it's what the Tomb Kings kind of should have been all along. Yeah, just, you know, wait a good seven, eight years to finally get something right. Uh, have you ever tried the oils at Hobby Lobby, Master's Touch, or Grumbacher? I think I've used Grumbacher watercolors and maybe even Grumbacher pastels back in the day. I don't know if we ever used Grumbacher oils back in the day. Something tells me that they would be at least the same as the, like that Windsor Newton starter set. I haven't really... There hasn't been big difference. Like the, between the Gamlin, the Windsor Newton, uh, what the Holbein and the... Williamsburg, I haven't noticed any real differences between them. There might be little tiny periphery things around the edges or something, but I haven't noticed anything crazy different about them. The only difference I noticed is that... So say we all! So say we all. Oh, thank you so much for another resub there. Oh, that's beef in the hole. So beef, I got... <laughs> I have no I have no diorama to show you because well it's on its way to you well both of them so yeah there uh, you also will have enough toilet paper to last you through the next two or three virus situations so you don't have to worry about that you are all set so feel free to eat beans at every meal because you will have what you need to deal with it now we are going to take a little bit of this brown matter over here speaking of which and throw this on Urkin Brand's shield uh, let's see uh, let's see I'm selling that toilet paper on the black market hey uh, uh, one of our our, our the long-term buyer who's been with us since 2005 and is produce smart every restaurant in the area gave him their toilet paper because well they had to be closed so he had he had oranges and toilet paper piled to the top of his uh, tent, which is an interesting combination. All right, so we've got most of our prep glaze going. He's looking nice and he's looking nice and dark. Oh look, we've got some sponges, but I want more. Uh, and thanks again, B, for the sub. That is appreciated, like a lot actually, <laughs> because I guess those those tier three subs they count like five times more i i didn't realize that i just thought that's okay well it counts as one it's not like a it's not like an ollie font it doesn't just count as one ah, and then retiring let's see master's touch of his uh could be produced in china well uh the the not gamblins the whole bind that's produced in japan right well especially since all the containers are have japanese all over them I think there, there's been a few people that maybe have tried the Master's Touch and they weren't necessarily super thrilled with it, or they just they noticed a difference maybe. 
Aside from that, I'm not quite sure really if there's a huge difference between these. That to me, that's that's the other. Uh, what would you say? That's the other plus about the oil paints is that you know if you get, I think well, Liquitex has a line of oils, right? If you get a brand that is that's not a Walmart five dollar special, you're kind of good to go. It, it's less so with the the miniature paints, right? Because people they always tell me. That man, I got this stuff and it was terrible, or I got this stuff and this was great, but it cost so much. Now, hey, not Jay. Thank you, Roy. Let's get. He's just in time, and then he gets ridden down. He's like, man, I just want what's in the cup here. That's all I want. Uh, let's see. That kill includes Bill the Pony and Tom's horse, Patty Lumpkin. Oh, hey, Baron, how are you doing? Let's see, Nosferatu is usually in Discord, and, and every time you're so see, we all repeat <laughs> it, they giggle. They're like, what are you doing? And I tell them that I must join the Cult of Oil to understand. Uh, so Sky King says there's only five or six named horses in Lord of the Rings. So what, Snowmane, Shadow, Fax, I and well, Bill the Pony, like like we were just uh, talking about there, and the other one. I I think at this point it would just be well, what have you seen? You know, in illustrations of Urkenbrand, what he might actually be riding around on. So let's just set him aside so that we can maybe hit one of these guys too, since we're doing our preparation glaze. Oh, let's see. Uh, oh, Fatty Lumpkin. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see. Most of the art portrays his steed as dark brown. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, I think... Oh, because they just they just released, what, the new Aomir figure? And they keep showing him on... I don't want to say a dapple gray, but it's more of a dapple gray type of a horse. And it's been a little while. I'd have to Google... The movies or whatever to see how they portrayed him actually speaking of which i guess lord of the rings has a new supplement out uh it's a quest for the ring bearer or something like that and i know zorp zorp he was going over that on his channel and he was talking about all of the crazy things that the fellowship has and then the then the ring rates and stuff uh, legendary legions that's what they call them so they're not they're not part of just your regular rule book units. These are special for these scenarios or whatever. Which, I mean, that'd be fun to have, but it is fifty bucks, so it's going to be a long time before I have that one. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's gift gift September. That's right. Oh geez, it is still September. Uh, Queels, I'm not sure they ever showed him because he was the one that led the Rohirrim, I guess on foot, to, oh gosh, the Battle of the Hornburg, not Helm's Deep, right? Like hashtag not Helm's Deep, that's what all of the people that read the books say. Not that I've read the books. I don't know, I don't know if GW ever did a figure of Helm Hammerhand. I don't, I don't know if they ever did. He's walking around in the in the snow doing fisticuffs on all the done lendings or whatever. All right, so here, let's, uh, now we've got, we can do this whole stages of things. So there's your, your prep glaze. Then we start taking advantage of the prep glaze. And then we get to here, which is basically now done. And wow, that really does make a difference putting on that anti -shirt. wow oh my goodness that i mean that, that was kind of on the shinier side and now i ain't got no shine there is no shine left on that baby check that out that is sweet he's ready he is ready to join urky makes a big old difference there that's pretty cool now let's look at the beloved Kamul the Easterling here. Ah, now you can really see all the different colors in the black there. Oh, has he just got the Morgul Knight? Oh, yeah. Well, Sky King. That's, uh, 
it's kind of funny because the f these were actually oh look at this so this is one of the extra bases that I made for the Morgul Knights right here and this was the first chance that I've had to, since then that was what series four or something like that or maybe it was series seven and now Morgul Knights are like series four or something I think this is the first time I've had a chance to use those same texture plates and and it, like I said doing the bone on this doing all these different colors with the oh man that was this was so friggin easy it was insanely easy so I'm I'm really liking that that is fun now maybe this guy here what we might do is we haven't really done let's do a dark let's do a darker horse on him here so let's just take advantage of what we've already got going here Oh, we got the cheers thing. Wheels with the oh, he's in time. He is in time, and he gets ridden down again. Like, what the heck is going on here, man? He's always getting ridden down. Let's get. Uh -oh, I think we got. Oh, we have a war going on. Well, in that case, I will just let all those splash right into the cup right here, and then I'm gonna take me a sip of that. Because, well, then I'll be out soon, unfortunately. But hopefully we can get some more tomorrow. Before tomorrow's stream, which we're doing. So thanks again, everybody, for the bits. And again, my apologies for not being able to get around to doing this sooner. I was I was fully intending to do one to last night. But just stuff happened, and we didn't get to do one last night. Now here's the fun thing. So you know, let's just uh, put some more of our dark in here, just just for funsies. Get a little dark into that green here. You can see I'm not putting it absolutely everywhere. I'm just kind of focusing on the darker areas here. Yeah. So not Jay. How long? What was it? Uh, was it three hours or something like that? Painted up those three guys. On Rocky's big broadcast there, and now let's see what happens. Ah, see, look at that. Look at that. When oil's dry, all is not lost because, haha, <laughs> try doing that with acrylics. I mean, I suppose there's a way that you could, but that wouldn't be so easy. Not as easy as this. When you're in the cult, then you you find out all of these things. Yeah, definitely not, Jay. It's been uh, it's been pretty crazy. Now, so I saw he had all kinds of. Uh, Matt had a bunch of pictures posted of drywall being torn down. Was that part? Was that like going back to the past when he first started doing his rework of that studio area, or is he tearing up another part of the house? Because I I thought he was done with that project, and then I saw on Facebook maybe it was just one of those memory type things or something. Yeah, see, look at that. See, we just kind of darken all that stuff down. Our green here. Hmm. I don't really think... Uh, you know what? What the heck? We'll just pop a little bit of our thalo green over here. We don't need a ton of it, but we are going to mix it with something. As I look at this here, yeah, we'll just mix that maybe with a little indigo no, Van Dyke Brown. So Van Dyke Brown. Oh, there is a... That's all dry right there. So Van Dyke Brown. Some of our green over here. And we're just going to pop this in a... Towards some of the recesses. And in no time at all, we're basically going to have a figure that's... Got some wet oils on it. Got some shading on it. And we can, we're good to go again, so check this out. Look at what that just did to this horsey right here. We wanted to change the color. We changed that color right quick, and we can still play off of that pretty well. Now we also got Erky over here. Uh, let me see. At the three miniatures in the three hours. Let's see. Uh, he's tearing out the walls in the other half of the basement. So, oh, okay. 
All right, so so that was new. All right. I just thought I was losing. Well, I, I frequently lose my mind, so that wouldn't be a surprise. So again, we're it's all about the dry brushing, right? It's all about that dry brushing, which on here, not a dry brush. I'm going to turn up my brightness now because, well, these guys are pretty dark. Poof, there we go. Oh, he now has to stud out both rooms and then get the drywall up. I do believe we were talking about drywall here in a recent... Uh, maybe you were, uh, maybe that was us talking about the drywall during the stream there. Could have been. So here we're taking our... Well, it's actually a combination of the berry white green and our, let's say, faded ultramarine of oils, otherwise known as barite green and blue-gray from Holbein. Where's my other... I'm gonna just get a little touch of this on so this one here. Uh, who knows, maybe we can actually get some flower and grass tufts on, on this guy at a certain point in the evening here. But that is... Uh, that's really fun. I love what that stuff does to it. It just wipes out all the shine. So this was another case where the red color was kind of shiny. Again, some of the stuff that I used in here, just the paints themselves just have a tendency to be more on the shiny side. And all that shiny just got killed. All gone. Very cool. We'll just give this and his sword just a hint of... A little hint of bluishness at this point. And if we're going to go... so. We're looking for something darker brown on the horsey then. I'm going to have to avoid all of that. I keep wanting to dive into all of the interference blue. Because I just was working with that stuff. All right, let's get rid of let's get rid of some of that. Okay. I'm starting to find some lights in the shield there. Horse, uh, that's that's a weird little piece of armor on the, that horse's face there. But uh, that this is the one thing though. This kind of stuff. Now that you have the digital sculpting and everything, that that stuff does tend to work out a little bit better these days. Oh, let me see. When you told us you were painting blind and then showed the light you normally paint, it was great. Yeah, this is uh, well. Boom, there you go. That's that's the normal light that I work with, and you can see why we're not using that. <laughs> Basically what that does, like right now I can't see anything under here. I mean it's just all it's just all black. I can't see a darn thing under there. That's mostly what turning on that light's gonna let me do is actually see what the heck is going on under there. Also, I'm just going to get a little bit of paint there because once I have this there, I can I can move it around. I can do some stuff with it. We're just going to give our little horsey here a little change in his in his highlight color there. How's about some of this? Another little touch of our indigo. Just looking for something that's kind of a bluish gray here. And once again, we just uh, let's see, we changed Mr. Horsey just a little bit more here. Now it's not quite so brown anymore. Uh, I think we're all caught up on the chat. Now we'll just we'll be blasting across all these different figures here, because well, that's kind of what we do. We work on a whole bunch of stuff 
all at the same time. We're going to hit a little bit of our terra rosa here with a little bit of our off-white yellow. Again, we're going to take away some of that paint. So I see we only got a combination of the leather and the metals on this. Okay, good to remember here. Good to remember. And I'll even let a little bit of this get onto the horses. I don't know, maybe we'll give them a... Maybe we'll just stick with the darker tail because there's going to be so many other things going on here that may be less of that, less distracting. And you can see how much of that, look at how much of that it's picked up. That is that pre-glaze that we're always talking about. What the heck, let's get a little touch of our yellow ochre here. Let's just throw out a bit more. Where did you go? Purple mat? No, I might want some more brown matter out here too. Just, well, because. I might even throw a hint of the, we have some of the cadmium red out here. I'm just going to throw a little bit of the scarlet out there too. It does not take very much of that stuff at all. Oh, Static Overdrive, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm just kind of glad to be able to do this here. I, it's not quite the the subjects that I was thinking of doing, but yeah, this this is what I was filming till the the wee hours today. I had a blast doing this. This is the newest series right here, and this was a test of the interference paints. I only have the one. That's just the interference blue. And it definitely did some neat stuff. And I got to tell you, boy, painting all this, I really wish I had this for when I was doing the Tomb Kings. That 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 whole thing would have been done in a couple of weeks instead of, like, a year. That could have been... Oh, this is actually... This is a fun little combo right here. This is the yellow ochre with the smidge of yellow ochre with that terra rosa. So that's kind of a... That's a fun little combo right there. Yeah. Uh, let me see there, the Urkin brand. What did I do for his plume? Well, looks like it was white, so I guess we're doing that. Time for some green, I suppose. I mean, it is Urkin brand and Rohan, after all. Uh, filling with smart home nerdy. Oh, the, the smart home stuff. Now, hopefully it's not too smart and doesn't take over. Oh, yeah, remember we were using, we made sap green out of burnt umber and thalo green. That's right. That's right. Let's try and get some of this green over in here right away so it just has a chance to set. So it can be in the proving drawer for a while before we try and do any sort of free handy type stuff over the top of it all right that is set anywhere else but this not seeing anything else there so we're just gonna let that stay there for now let's start to think already about Getting some red onto his shield here, and I think we might do that in a bit of a glazy way here. We're taking some of that cadmium red deep. It's mixed with a wee bit of our blue-black mix. And this is where we're just, this is actually essentially a wash of that red. But because it's cadmium red and it's oils, that's going to cover. That's not going to be just, see how that, look at how it's creeping in all those fun little crevices makes it a whole lot easier to get that stuff in there now did I do pretty sure I did yeah the underside of the pommel with some of the red too so a little red shield here for Urkin Bran poof there it is 
does not have to be difficult. And Spectrum 75. Uh, what, what, when did you say? Oh, he just snuck in. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. I just looked. But I needed to just look again. How are you doing, Spectrum? Well, I hope everything is going okay. Let's see if we can get some of this in here, just while we're thinking about it. We need it there anyways. This is why we work on several things all at the same time. Now, one of the things I did learn about the interference, now there's a couple of things. It's almost as if it works better over something that is just, say, some dry oil. So maybe paint a bunch of stuff and then be painting that over the top of it when that is dry. It doesn't necessarily like to be, it's not a big fan of the blending. It doesn't like that quite so much as well regular oils do, which, I mean, makes sense because it's not a regular oil. So not a huge surprise. All right, that one's set. We just got to get some red here. And again, this is that cad red deep. I mean, there's not a whole lot of this shield that is actually, that has to be red. The outer portion here doesn't have to be quite so thin down. The inner portion will be, so it just it's easier to get to it. Let the oils do the work. So again, we take a little bit more of our thinner. We get that in here and we'll fill in this. And because the oils are just naturally more opaque, especially cadmium red, that just, it fills that in. I don't have to work so hard, which is just really sweet. Really love it. How's about... See, yeah, let's maybe get some of the, we'll get some, some lighter greens in there. We're also going to start thinking about maybe his helmet colors and such. Let's see if we can get some more sky bluey type stuff going on as well. Oh, I think, yep, we're all caught up. Thought I saw another new person there, but... We'll just hit a little bit of the scale, even on the plastic ones. The these scale mill things just came out a little bit better, a little less rough. And as you can see, that has picked up some of the other, which is just fine and dandy because guess what? That's gonna go onto here now. Just gonna go onto here, and haven't really done too much with the black horses I mean, outside of the ring rates and that was the session we did a little while ago but you see how it picks up all of that it's picking up all those darker colors that just is fine sort of counting on that this is why I hit it with a little bit of that darker black first of all to darken it down but it also acts as sort of a catalyst here, so that when I put this down, it's actually got something to mix into. Uh, let's say that this darker color was already in place. I could just throw this on and maybe even take the sponges and wipe some of it away or s just plop it on there and scumble it around. As Numskull knows, we love the scumble. It's scumble for the win with the oils. Scumble, feather, all of those things. Oh, hey, Hobby Hutch, how are you doing? Yes, indeed, we definitely have to uh, always salute our intrepid moderator who's always right there with all the links and all the other stuff that we need to make this thing possible. So we're going to get some of the... Just looking to get some of the Terra Rosa out of this here. little Filbert... I want to be able to use this as a, I don't know, blending, but almost a, a spreader right here. We're just going to spread around some of this lighter.
bluish gray like that. Just push this around. And it's already, it's already picking up a lot of the that, the black stuff that we put down there. Now, where's that other... Aha! So let's see... If we, I'm going to see if I've got another one that has that same shield. I think I do. Nope, actually I thought this was the same. Nope, that's a different one. I might have... Wait, let me see if I've got... One of my infantry guys, no. So we'll just we'll kind of work across these two here. Let's also snag ourselves one of our little quadruple zeros here. Oh, so not Jay. How many didn't I have at least two or three figures in my hand at a time? Also, that was pretty fun. I think we were we were going uh, multi-figure in each hand. Let's just start to bringing out some of our horses here on his little shield. And just to make it more interesting, that's when we do the, the little bit of knot work on him. Because it's so much more interesting. Way more interesting to look at. Oh, Dragon Eye in the house. How, and D8, how are you guys doing? Uh, the silver ring is causing some issues by not wanting to solder together, but just another day in the shop. Well, that and, uh, yeah, I was sorry to hear about the whole compressor thing, too. And, folks, be be sure, if, I'm sure most of you guys already have now, but be sure to check out the Armored Wolf Instagram and Etsy pages for not just dice bags, more than dice bags. But dice bags are really cool. Uh, let's see. Yep, at the end you had to just like that. And as Numskull says, and look at this, there's a V in the house too. There is a V. Let's see if we can, we'll just start our little bit of free handy stuff this away here. I mean, look at how simple it can be, and it's kind of easy over the drier oil. So that's as I'm saying, if the oil is dry, it is really not, all is not lost. All is not lost. You can still do tons of great things with the oils, even over dry oil paint. One more of these little knot work pieces here and then we'll go back and that looks like it's light until you get in this and then you'll see just how not light it is so boom there you go we'll get these horses heads lightened up just a touch as well I think most of Urkenbrand's... Now we did do some knot work on Urkenbrand's shield too. I'm looking at that. Yes. Oh, gee, there's a whole bunch of knot work on that. So we should... Well, we'll get to that one too. So V, I hope everything is... Uh, and yes, be sure to give Flag or Dragon the follow. And also be sure, guys, to check out War Rocky's War Room. Because, well, that's... Uh, it's the... It's my chance to get to do historical stuff and, well, I suppose Gates of Antares stuff, too, because... Oh, geez, how'd that get all the way over there? Maybe I can hit this, too, with the with the anti-shiny stuff. But So this is another thing that we did on the Rockies War Room here. We are just painting up another one of these Algorand skimmers here, giving it the tiger treatment, which is always fun. It'll be well. Actually, I might just stick the, uh, I might stick the infantry version of Urkenbrand on one of these because it'd be a whole lot easier to hold that than holding the unmounted figure and this. And yeah, we'll just do it that way. That'll be easier. 
because I need to see those two side by side even more than what I'm doing here with these guys. So see, that looks just more fun. right? I've, what I've seen people do is, well, they just kind of paint those white, and that's it. And that's just not super interesting to look at. Oh, it is just a big old dead space. Ah, oh, here's our umber. Let's get to some of our umber over here, and we'll use that to enhance the shape of these even more. I guess that that's the the other thing too about the freehand is that you can touch that up and reform it. It doesn't all have to just be, oh my goodness, it wasn't absolutely super perfect the very first time. Yeah, you can go in there and resolve some crazy little issues with it too. Oh, Angry Ham. Let's see. Uh, a little bit and suddenly there'd be <laughs> away for a bit. Um, let's see. Uh, my skimmer is not she says my skimmer is pale and good actually how many the Joes the, did you get done now let's see dark chocolate with salted caramel yes cookies um oh I don't know if I had any cookies today may not have had any cookies today it was uh it, it wasn't a super crazy day but it was it was an up-tempo day early on that's for sure And just, oh, I need to get some of my light here on this, but first we're going to get some of our little bit of sky earthy type stuff going on there. What in the world? I guess that's a, uh... all right, now I see what the heck that is. Let's get a little bit of our sky color going on this too. I have to remember that that's there's there's dry oil it's right there I, I'm kind of I'm spoiled by always having some wet oil paints to to mix with there all right where's there it is I'm looking around for my yellow ochre now here this is another case where say, I can just kind of take the the new paint stick it over here there is no paint existing there so I can just I mean, it's time for some finger paint, right? Just wipe it away. Just take the old finger, wipe that away. You could use the sponge, whatever. Not a big deal. This might give it just a hint of some orange to it or some kind of orangey brown. We'll have to do some... A little bit of not work freehand on that. Again, we're just going to... Take that finger and just kind of wipe some of it away. Tones that down. How's about a wee bit of a terra rosa maybe on some of these leather straps. Start getting a little difference. And I think we were doing red on, yes, we were doing red on the saddle blankets too. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. We got to, oh, we got to get some. No, that's just a, that's just a, I don't know, I guess that is, that could be le uh, not leather armor on the boots. Uh, cookies for everybody. Oh, no problem, not Jay. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's donuts. Oh, boy. Yeah, that, that half of one was a nice little appetizer. They may have to be another half of a one consumed at some point. And those, those were really good. I mean, well, donuts are tasty, but that really was like a, not a cylindrical cake, but that was definitely had some cakiness to it, which is always good. So that's starting to bring out some of the, the colors in the horse here, giving it a little something for it to play up against. How's about a bit of... Skin tone here. Let's just grab a little bit of our ochre into this. 
Ah, oh, we're going to need to get some gold on this thing, too. That's right. It looks like he's got his uh, little face mask here. Just going to... Yeah, there's no... We'll not do gloves on him. We're getting to some of our... Cadmium yellow here. Not quite sure what color we want to do with the hair yet. We'll figure that out later. Where's my... There it is. I wonder where my off-white yellow went. Oh, let me see. Oh, hey, Mini Beady. How are you doing? Now I got the big one done and this, then the one small one like the tiger and two more started. Well, that's... uh. And that's not that's not uh, any progress at all getting those things done. They're not necessarily the the easiest things to deal with. They got a lot of little stuff going on. Geez, I don't know. I haven't seen all I've ever seen are the. Uh, I don't think I've seen bigger skimmers than those. They have bigger skimmers than those. I don't remember that. Well, it's been a while. Oh, let's see. Oh, Kringle. Yes, Dragon Eye. That's, uh, uh, I guess we won't be having that this year. That was always a favorite at Christmas time. Well, and Thanksgiving. It was the Kringles. Oh, yeah, those, the Kringles. Those were always really good. Uh, let me see. I do my best to pitch oils to my friends. Oh, I'm okay, Mini Beady. How about you? How How are you doing? Well, there is definitely, unfortunately, it's like everything else. There's all of these stories out there that people read or hear or whatever. And they just kind of unfortunately take that as gospel instead of actually, well, just looking for themselves and finding out for themselves. And at a certain point, I just say, all right, if you're... It's kind of like anything else. If you are not willing to try, well, then that's just... Unfortunately, that will be your, in the end, your loss because you just weren't willing to just give it a shot and see if you liked it or not. It's kind of like anything else. I mean, it could apply to food, too. You just Sometimes you just got to give things a try. I don't know, maybe for the heck of it, I mean, like, well, like the, even the interference colors, I had no idea if they were going to work or not. I had no idea what was going to happen with those. I just said, well, I'll just try it. And if it doesn't work, ah, eh, whatever. It's not that big a deal. Now, <laughs> like Numskull says, uh, yeah, when you can't do detailed stuff, right, Numskull? You can't do any detailed things. You certainly can't do any freehand with them. You can't do that at all. Uh, let's see. Rocco Versoni released a video on YouTube where he paints minion oils from scratch. Yeah, there, there's a whole bunch of that now. It's, it's just kind of interesting. Now, I think they're still out there. I, I have not looked in a long time, but if you look at my Facebook Live episodes, you'll see stuff. You'll see <laughs> when this set was brand new. And I mean, well, actually now it's more like three, four years ago. Oh, hey, Paint Miniatures, how are you doing? So, yeah, this, well, actually, I can show you the pictures of him. So this, this again, this was the color test video that uh, now it is, it's finished rendering. There we go. So there you go. That's what he looks like. And we managed to get all the pictures set up of him. So that is the color test figure. And from here, we move on to the rest of the unit. And while well, speaking of Lord of the Rings, while I'm down here, I set up a few photos of my Easterling army here. So I just, this is my favorite. That's why I did Kamul the Easterling the other day, because I needed, needed to have him done. I had to just kind of <laughs> proxy him the one and only time I got a chance to play my Easterlings. And I think we got one more picture here again. So that was, uh, and that's one of the terrain boards that I've got set up for. 
my hopefully Lord of the Rings battle reports at some point in the future. Like I said I cannot cannot guarantee when those might happen. I'd love it to be right now. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Nosferatu, it's, uh, some, the, the one thing about that is that it can be a little bit of a curse and that people say, they, they obviously, the, the F word comes out that it's, oh, it's just a fad. You remember air, airbrushes were a fad. Pretty much everything in painting that we see today was a fad, which now is still there in some cases many, many years later. And of course, the original paint for miniatures was oil paints. There was no such thing as acrylic miniature paint. Actually, there was no such thing as acrylic paint, period. There was just oil paints and pastels. I didn't even realize that watercolors are a much more a relative recent kind of a newcomer to the field. Because, well, maybe this is full circle because my watercolor teacher back in the 40s and 50s, I believe, he, he he gained prominence by basically being the first guy to, and of course they use this term to legitimize watercolors as a medium, because until then watercolors was seen as something that was just a sketch. It wasn't a permanent thing. It was just something that you did on your way to an oil painting. And he was the first one to actually do watercolors as a basically a, a painting of their own. Uh, let me see. So we're planning on transferring to more Twitch based from our YouTube lot. Yeah, that is definitely. Well, I tried doing a YouTube live back in April and when it shut me down in the first five minutes and then put strikes on other people's channels for just painting, literally painting a horse with one other person it wasn't even a full-on public access video then i said okay well we're 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 leaving this now this is unusable and well it did i suppose it worked out just fine because now we're here on twitch uh, let's see marco was the first one i saw using oils on minis uh, but james sold me on them uh let's paint miniatures we was able to get seven new oil new windsor newton oils now did you get some of the like the terra rosa uh, the the like the cerulean and the indigo those type of colors uh, let me see so I know I'll be a bit paranoid with my own purple nurple skellies uh, I'll use the time to get some ideas instead of being discouraged and let's see uh, I consider it combined arms any tool I can put my arsenal for painting is a plus and goes into play and practice Yeah, I just, it's its weird. Well, with the airbrushes, it was the same way. It was, if it's not airbrushed, it's junk. Then it, if it was airbrushed, it was cheating. And it just kind of swings wildly back and forth from, well, it has to be all this or all the other. And I'm not quite sure why that happens. Why, why people have to have their little, their, the metallic, we <laughs> It wasn't all that long ago. It was the last week. There was that huge raging non-metallic debate thing going on and just, oh my goodness. I posted every picture that I possibly could of entire units and armies painted in non-metallic and yet there was at least three other people after that that just insisted that you can't have non-metallic metal on armies because it doesn't work. Which was just it was really weird because people said, did you not see these pictures <laughs> from all angles? But that was not enough. And that's when I just said, okay, I'm out. Now we're going to add some more golds in here. Yeah, I just, I don't know why. It's just like a... Well, I'm not going to use a clippers to clip these pieces because clippers are bad or they're, they're cheating. It's like, darn right, I'm going to use some clippers to clip those parts off the sprue. I'm not going to take them off with a hammer. 
but still there's folks they insist that it's just got to be this way only that's a very i mean you want to limit yourself that that's your it's all your choice but man uh let's see uh pictures clearly don't work yes Oh hey not hey random minute your name how are you doing? Yeah that was that was one of the crazier things. I I do believe there well if you can use the word rationale was that each of those pictures was only taken from one angle so therefore it disproved the fact that there were pictures from six different angles. Literally it was the same guy from six different angles. And they still insisted that was not enough evidence. So that that's when I realized there is no point in wasting any more time here. Uh, let's see, so I tried some oils on a monster the other day. Hopefully, hopefully it was okay. I know there was probably, well, there's going to be a learning curve involved, that's for sure. Hopefully not too much of a learning curve for you. Let's pop a little bit more of our light over here. Keep going on Mr. Horsey. Actually, this uh, this way here would give me a, that would be a fifth horsey. Well, five horses, nine infantry. That's really not much of a, well, actually, no way. I also have AON. So technically that would be six horsies. And Erkenbrand would be seven horsies. Still, for Rohan, not a lot. So we'll have to keep doing more of them. Uh, let's see, no indigo, but did now have the cerulean, ultramarine, cadmium yellow. Oh, permanent rose. Ah, the permanent green light. Oh yeah, you have the sap. Oh, and you have the diazonine purple, aka what is it? Egyptian violet. Heh. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody else in the world refers to it as diazonine purple, except for Williamsburg, who calls it Egyptian violet. Let's give ourselves a quickie little glaze on this before we. Maybe do a little bit of our free handy type stuff. So we'll let that sit there. Have a chance to, like I said, not dry, but just set in place. Let's see if we can do some green on this. And by green, I mean, I'm just going to take whatever random light color is sitting in here and just going to start popping under this green. I don't care. Not a big deal. Take Mr. Blending Brush here. Ah, let's see. Airbrush invented before the tank was. Ah, big Reaper Worms thing. Ah, okay. Yeah, like Kathy says, it's easy to make. Hey, oils are fantastic. It's really easy to make mud. Uh, except when you actually want them. Uh, Angry Hemp says, I'm proud of my browns. Oh, look at that. See, we just, uh, see how that just kind of blends in there real nice, like. Any brush can be a blending brush. Uh, let's see, one question after done painting, how do you clean the brushes? Oh, that's easy enough. And the handy thing is, this will work for your acrylic paints too. So it's just from Windsor Newton. It's for dried acrylic and oils, and it is not hazardous, no vapor. It's fantastic stuff, not e not expensive either. And it really cleans your brush as well. And it works for everything. I mean, it'll it'll work for regular regular acrylic paints too. That is fantastic. I was I was really happy when I found this stuff. Like Ugly says, no vapor, no fun. Well, that's okay. There's certain foods that supply ample amounts of vapors, which makes me happy. I'm going to get a little bit of my 
touch more of that ochre in here. Hey, Dr. Feegood, how are you doing? Uh, let's see, dark purple to purple blend. Dark blue to purple blends turn out awesome. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, let's see. As you continue to paint with the oils, do you find you prefer a thicker paint or still? Oh, I always use the diluted stuff out of the container because it's just, it is vastly easier to use and it cuts down on the drying time a ton. I was dead. Even in the early days when I really didn't know what the heck I was doing, I guess it's because when I started out, I, I had the Mig Ammo oil brushers, so I always had those as an example. So that's that's probably why that was so stuck in my mind as, as doing that whole thinning them down in advance. I know someone was saying, well, well this was a not-so-friendly debate again on, on on Facebook. Where are their friendly debates there? But they just insisted that some person did oils like right out of the tube super thick and that's the only way you can do it like, well okay whatever whatever uh, let me see uh, uh, Dr. Feegood managed to actually get some painting done between the two streams between let's see well, when Kathy Kathy finished up a little after five and I do believe this started at around 6.30 they were starting to look at that. Remember, this had absolutely new colors in it whatsoever. All of a sudden, now we don't just have green. We have a few. We have some cooler greens in here. We got some warmer greens here. <laughs> Is that getting have friendly debates on the interwebs? Oh, hey, Don Mac, how are you doing? Yeah, Hobby Hutch. It's and then the crazy thing that now you know why I always have all the pictures here and all the miniatures because I just will say well okay well what about this this thing that I'm holding in front of your face well in front of this camera which is projecting to a screen which is in front of your face because as as we've seen even having that is not enough evidence for some folks I suppose it's a little bit like the whole, uh, you know, well, then why from a plane does the Earth look round and there's a horizon? Well, people have, they have answers for that too. So I suppose it's the, the flat Earth crowd of the miniature painting world, I suppose. Ah, yeah, Nosferatu, that's, uh, <clears throat> because, uh, I'm not <clears throat> quite sure when that whole uh, phrase, everything you read on the internet is true, or meme, or whatever it was, first came out. Well, so we're just getting ourselves some nice little greens over here. All of a sudden, uh, the horse, because it's almost like addition, or by sub well, it's addition by addition, because this thing is starting to look way more what we wanted it to look like by virtue of painting everything else around it which is kind of hilarious so here's a little bit of that that's that cadmium red deep mixed with whatever palette sludge is in the brush hey if mig ammo can have starship filth as a color i can have palette sludge that is mine i think in that 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 mythical oil line that's being worked on, we may just have to have a palette sludge color. It might be the only color that's named, that's not just a regular name. Heck, I was so tempted to just to name red number one, blue number two, <laughs> blue number four, just to make people nuts. Now we're going to Keep applying some of this. There is all of a sudden he's got himself lots of nifty, lots of color going on. Ah, let's see. Oil paints are like Jello. Cadmium red tastes the best. Let's see. Well, and Thalo. Well, Thalo green is just it's best for your complexion. Uh, well, Thalo blue is good too. Both of those are really good for your complexion. They'll give you that nice. Deathly Pallor. 
We're going to lighten up our reds here now. We've gotten our original color down. Lighten up those reds just a bit. Uh, the cadmium bunny Easter egg. Ooh, let's get some uh, lighter red over here on our on our shield too. Well, you have it, well cadmium red makes it go faster, makes it go right to the end right away. And soylent green. Oh, hey, this. So, how are you doing? Oh, hey, trash. How are you doing? Yeah, there's there's a, a super secret oil paint project going on that, well, and, and it's good that no one no one else will know except for us. We'll be the only ones that know. There's just a lot of different aspects to it. A lot of things that need to be worked out. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm glad you're doing good there, Thistle. Let's have a paint mixer, um, some pewter sprue pieces in your paint bottle. Where the heck are my sprue pieces? I've got some here just for this occasion, yeah. So just sprue pieces like this. I have tons of them. I cut off broccoli bases. Where the heck? Ah, here we go. Look at this. So all of this, all of this, look at all this stuff. Chunks of metal that I can chop up. And I can have them go in here. And you just mix this up enough. You can hear those things rattling around in there. You can see it just uh, keeps that all looking nice. Here we can can hear those We've got them in here too and it's just a big old I just I just saved the look at this here's there's some broccoli base look at there's the there's the feet right there I think there's oh these are Reaper con minis here yeah okay there's another Reaper miniature just again sliced it off the broccoli base I can maybe snip that in half I mean you're just gonna throw these things away might as well keep them and actually use them for something So let's, oh, and this guy has, uh, yeah, now this guy is dry too. But this was, I think, our last session that we did here. Maybe this was Monday night, I think. Might have been. So he's all dry now. That was a blast. Really had fun with this. Oh, let's see. Have you seen the final? Uh, I have not seen the final standings yet, Thistle. I have not seen seen the final standing, and I, well, I, you know who's going to finish first place all the time, every time. We 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 there's there's only one thing that can finish in first place, and that is the one true brush. We worship the one true brush. It comes in many colors. It comes well, <laughs> when you beat it up, it comes in many shapes, but this is the color that it is now, and of course it is available. Hobby Lobby, five bucks, 12 brushes, and it does wonders because, you know, here's your pristine brush, and then, then, then look at this. When it gets too beat up, you cut it like this. It's a spatter brush. It's a stipple brush. It does all kinds of different things. Uh, let's see. When there's more buffer in the plant, I'll catch you later, Bethany. So at least you are, you are safe from, from any sort of object source lighting. Uh, let me see. Uh, decent paint mixer. Oh, I think. Uh, yeah, look, it just it doesn't take much to. I mean, I literally just. That's all it took. This is not like miniature paints, because again, the oils are they're not like acrylics. They're not going to be quite so. It's not going to coagulate the way acrylic does. I mean, that's literally what acrylic does. It just kind of coagulates. Math. This, so it, it's been a very strange week, so I have not had a chance to. I, I'm just assuming that West Coast is easily in the top eight. I'm going to assume that St. Kilda is also in the top eight. Oh, let me see. Uh, done with the huge map, set and done, so now I can move on to new stuff. 
Now, okay, I had to message him back and forth. I was like, I don't remember that. That's just that's just his sleep. Okay, so oh, all right, yeah. Now I see what's going on here. So we'll give that a little bit of a we'll give that a little bit of shiny there. West Coast and Western all made. Now is it is it the same same matchups that we had before, where it's going to be the West Coast at five and Bulldogs at eight? So Bulldogs have to head out there. At least that is my assumption. Now let's let's see if we can't do our little bit of a free handy type things on this. Now oh five six and seven. Uh, let me see. As Aussie says, Geelong's going to win it all. That it's kind of funny that you mentioned Geelong there, Aussie, because back in 2008, when we were first introduced to footy, the two teams we saw the most were Geelong. Well, actually, Geelong, St Kilda, and the Bulldogs, and Kathy, I think, had already chosen St Kilda, which left me with either Geelong or Western Bulldogs. So, yeah, clearly, yeah, I can't do freehand and oils. You can't do that, which just happened. That is not possible. You can't do that. Oh, let me see. I think we're all set on that chat there. We're going to get some darks in here to get some separation with this. Before we go back in with some more lights, maybe. And again, that just seems to be some regular sleeve action there. So, Hello, won't do too much. Spark my Thank you so much for the follow, Witsy. I appreciate that. Obviously, Gandalf does too. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to Urkin Brand here. I just wanted to. Get some stuff going on this guy. It doesn't take very much. I mean, we already had, again, we had something to work with here. We already had paint sitting on this thing. We just kind of went ahead and took advantage of it. Let's get some lighter stuff in here. Now, uh, this is the stream where we defy possibilities. Oh, thanks, Witsy. Yeah, this is, uh, we're just kind of filling out the some more of our Rohan horde right here, doing the oils. We are also working on Urken brand here, so we are going to be matching them up to this. And you can watch this one being painted on the YouTube channel also. I'll make sure that I think I got the brightness okay. Uh, let's see. Western is going to play Richmond uh, tonight. Oh, at 10 our time? That's weird. So I take it that the scores are also still insanely low. Or, or people are just kicking behinds. Uh, let's see. Dominic has to head out. I'll catch you later, Don. I hope that uh, you have a good D&D &D session there. Hope that you have a good D and D session. Now, oh, with this, I don't know if you had a chance to see this. This was uh, I was just working on this video into the wee hours of this morning. So it's also with the oils, but we tried the interference paints for the first time. So you can see how, see how this color shifting there. You got blue, then it kind of changes over to purple there. So that was the interference blue that we used with the oils, and we certainly respected the umber. But this was so much easier than doing all those stupid Tomb Kings back in the day. This was absolutely fun. So this was episode two. We'll be doing part three. Oh, I'm guessing more like Sunday. Because that's going to, once that series gets going again, it's going to be all about finishing that series. I'm going to be doing another color mixing thing with uh, all of those... Uh, those color swatches again. We're going to be doing that with blue, though, this time around. Here, let's get some light here on these, uh, some of these elements.
some of these here too. Get using our synthetic, our Kotman quadruple zero. Uh, he got later than expected for me. And there's a pillow, what you name it. Well, thanks for hanging out, Angry Ham. Now, it's the only one other team scored more than 80 that same week. Look at this. Look at what we got here. He's, we have somebody else. He's going to grab all that. He says, I am Mike Disney. This is my stream now. He says, I own this. Yeah, look at my face. You can't see it because it's out of focus. What was it? Uh, come for the painting, stay for the puppet shows, right? So Mike Disney, he's kind of creeping around here. He's after the cup, and all of a sudden, there's what Peleus there. He's like, mm -mm, that ain't going to happen. Yep, not going to happen, not on this stream. So how are you doing there, Mike? Now Dr. Feegood getting with the bits. And see what well, Pelly's gonna get those bits. He's in place. He's gonna get them all until he gets chased away by Rohan. He's like, first it's birds. Remember, everything was birds. Oh, Mike is getting over a bit of a bug. Oh, and it, Jesus, already eight o'clock. Yeah, so Kathy's uh, off to watch the Pyro Club, folks. So a little, little Zaltaris, little Justicus. So we bid Kathy the Fonda do it. Now let's let's look at one of our other guys. So let's see what we did. Uh, see, we did some simple little freehand things there. We can do stuff like that. I think we have another one here. Yeah, I think we did a couple little freehandy type things in some spots. Let's see if we can't do something like that here. Just get some of this ochre thin down. That should stick no problem. And we'll just start right down here with it. But you can only go so far. You can see I just kind of ran out of steam because it's every with every brush stroke it's picking up more and more of the green that's already there. Okay. Do some more here. Let's see if we can't get some grayish brown over here. We're going to take some of this. White. We are going to take some of our Van Dyke brown. Maybe a little hint of our burnt umber too. There we are. Just looking to get that a bit warmer. Speaking of warm, not everything has to be a cool gray on that horse. Boy, I wish I had some of my, I don't have my Dothraki screamers anymore or the archers or whatever to show people. So I'm going to have to, well, there's more of those to paint. So you'll be seeing more of those getting painted. No, uh, no problem, Static Overdrive. I do believe the Pictionary was uh, was canceled last night. There we go. We'll just uh, you know, find a few lighter things here. Yeah, the horse is black, but still, you would definitely want to have. Still want to have some some kind of highlight that have color to them. It's not enough to just have a highlight, but or even a mid-tone. It's got to have something interesting there besides just a lighter or darker version of something. Now, speaking of darker, so now we can now we can get some more of our really deep darks in here. Maybe even some more into the main. I'll grab this for a, a little bit of blending purposes here. So then we just plop that color there. Now we're just going to start pushing that around. 
Uh, let me see. I think we got everything all caught up there. So back to my real dark over here. I'm just going to put this in, in place and then we'll take some of the paint out of the brush. Yeah, let's get some more over here too. So again, we're, yeah, we can work light to dark, dark to light, back and forth. And there. And it looks like it's just black, but the, actually there is a lot of blue in this. And in some areas there's a little more brown in this. But now we've got ourselves some some smooth areas. And we're going to hit this again. To make, we can make it even smoother. I don't know, a half hour from now, 45 minutes from now. We hit it again. And that way all we do is smooth out the brush strokes. We're not actually mixing the paint really at all. It just kind of cuts down on some of the brush strokes. That is if you have them there. It's no... Not to say that you actually will have all these nasty, all these uh, uh, brush strokes all over the place. Oh, Rex, these are still these go. I think these are <laughs> older than 2004. These are the same old ones. Now some of them are newer, obviously. So they just did the they just did the Aomir kit. Here's the new Theoden, and as you can tell. <laughs> Because you can see the digital sculpting there. They've redone. They're basically redoing the heroes. I think they got a new fellowship. To, yeah, they're, they're doing all the hero. Well, the, the main heroes first. And then they're kind of working their way down from there. There's an AON on horseback. Now I'll show you. Let's see if I can find it here. Oh, I, that's, it's, oh I'm going to have to scroll down. But here, let's... Uh, I just took some group shots of the Easterlings here real quick. Yeah, so that's most of the Easterling army. We have added to it. We we were painting Kamul the Easterling a few days ago, which is another reason why I wasn't doing a stream, because I think, two, oh, that's right, Tuesday and the Wednesday, I was on the Rockies War Room uh, over, overnight stream there. So that's why I, was, I knew I was something else. And there we go. So yeah, and that's actually another one of my army painting series there. I think that was like series three. Yeah, it might have been series three with my Easterlings. Absolutely love the Easterlings. Who doesn't love Easterlings? Everybody loves Easterlings. Now I'm going to throw a little bit more of my cadmium yellows out here. It is definitely excruciating with the updates. Like the Army of the Dead is still... It's still the same, and Harad, unfortunately, also still the same ones. But whatever, hopefully, maybe at some point, we get new ones for those two. I'm going to take some of my off-white yellow here. And mixing it with the green, it's kind of a weird... We have an interesting little very light, almost kind of a greenish color here. Now let's uh, see what we're going to do with his hair. And then see what we're going to do with this little bit of horizon line here. Because we got to do something with that. we got to give him a horizon line. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you can. And you see how it's broken up. Definitely have to break up that horizon line. That could be a, a tree there. The, the guy who's right next to him. It could be whatever. So now we have ourselves a little wee bit of a horizon line there. We can even maybe move this camera down just a, a bit. Because these are some smaller figures. Uh-huh, now we're even closer. Uh, let me see, want to know more about... Oh, yeah, okay. So we'll take some of our thalo here, some of our white. Going to make ourselves a bit of a sky blue here. 
also so that it will separate from our that little bit of a gold outline there. We're going to maybe get a little bit of that into some of our scale mail here. And then we'll dive into some of our lighter tones as well. Boy, but I keep wanting to dive into... There's some stuff out here. I keep thinking that's white, but that's actually interference blue. <laughs> that would be weird. All of a sudden to see that on here. Ah, now, now it starts to look like it's almost like a happy little landscape right here. Like, there's your sun there. Happy little oryx. Eating the happy little Easter, uh, happy little, uh, what, the happy little halflings, right? So they're sort of like chicken legs. They don't last long. I guess if you put a halfling in a hot sauce, that would kind of, and if they come from New York, those would be buffalo wings. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the, uh, oh, do I have them? Are they easy enough to get to here? Aha. Uh -huh. So this little collection of stuff, a lot of these are orcs here, so a lot of this is for Orctober that we're getting ready to do. I have several different orky things, and of course, well, stuff like this, the, the Artisan Guild stuff, I mean, that is just, uh, absolutely love this. Can't get enough of it. And the paint, really, the oils really love the 3D stuff because there's just, there's less doodads on them. There's just way less doodads and it just leaves it more open. I mean, of course, well, we've got stuff like, like this one right here. Just nice open spaces for freehand and such and blending and everything. You just don't quite get that with the uh, uh, buff buffalo lings. Oh, I like that. There's, there's a meme there somewhere. Someone's got to make a meme out of that. There is a meme there somewhere. All right, so a little bit of a... Now let's get some metal going here. Let's get some blue into this. Just because there. Let's get some over here too. Touch of blue here, a little more over there. So now it's now it's starting to get the the shiny look. Where's our other guy here? Just like what we did here on these. I think we, yeah we even had some reflected green under that one too. That was very fun. But I'll have to. I'm curious to see now what that iridescent paint will do. And I figure that's that's the Necrons will be where I test that out. But I am also going to be using the that silver and aluminum mig ammo oil brusher to do the TMM on the Necrons. I think, oh, let's get a little bit of light onto the horse's face here. Keep sneaking in some lights over here too. And then I have to think, do I want to get do I need to get any darker here with some of my lines on this barding on the horse here? Let's see what we got. That's our Van Dyke Brown there. Yeah, that, that does help. Before we get back into some of our lighter stuff, that sort of helps. Also, just like we did on this guy here, we need to get into some of the greens on him. Uh, Mr. Urkin Brand there. Let's look at our well here. We'll just we'll do them side by side here. Let's not have that get too much of a cool color. And remember we put this green on here a while ago. 
whole point. Put it on a while ago so that we could come back now. And a lot of that is, again, it's mixing into the brush. So we have to go over here. We have to get some, some fresh paint now. And that's that's relatively dry. I mean, it's look at that. It's practically like a dry brush here. But yet when it goes down to the figure, not a dry brush anymore. So I'm just trying to compare the two here. Let's start to cool this down a bit. Can't take some of that off of there. Let's cool this down. Now the first one obviously was painted with acrylics and we did that a while back. Jeez, I don't know if that was last year or say February of this year on the YouTube channel. So you can check that one out. You just go to the you can just go to the Lord of the Rings playlist as well and it should be there. capture a couple of lights here right along the edges of his cloak. Now these old metal sculpts here that this robe is a wee bit rough to say the least. It's kind of the nature of the beast with the Rohan stuff here. I don't really imagine that GW would be doing redoing Urken brand anytime soon. They're, I mean they just finally did an Aomir so I think there's a lot of the regular heroes that they're going to do first before they get to, well, stuff, unfortunately, like Urk and Bran. I will just take some of my, that's my Van Dyke Brown here. And I'm just going to enter that directly into those greens. Let that make down here into some of the, the real depths of shading there. Okay, let's uh, do something with his his plume here. Let's give him some plumage. Oh, let's get some of our off-white. Yellow, uh, yeah, off-white, yellow, it's got a touch of reddishness in it. Hit that plume, yeah, it looks like a dry brush, it's not a dry brush because it's mixing. You can see that darker color that's in there, it's mixing with what's already there. We'll just, while we're at it, we'll hit the side of that sword blade that we know needs to get a little bit lighter. This one too, I mean, we just know that has to be done anyways, and we'll give that a little bit of a blend over there too. Horse, gonna take some of this burnt umber here, respect the umber. Give that some brown, and if we're just not seeing enough difference between that and the, the barding here, maybe we make a change in that. I think I'm going to give the horse one of those kind of prototypical, one of the, the socks here, right? One of those lighter socks. Maybe a couple of these. I think it needs just something besides that, and maybe maybe the tail should be lighter too. So we'll give him a sock over here, and then another one on the other leg. Let's do this one over here. A little bit lighter. We're just setting this up. We can go lighter again. We'll just take the camera. This is how we're going to be cleaning the brushes, right? We're just wiping them with a paper towel. We're not soaking them in any kind of cleaner or liquids or anything like that. 
as always that needs to be somewhat on the drier side you can see not that much paint on there and hopefully that just starts to, yeah and I think that's going to give us a little more separation here now with stuff like the barding and everything else and I'm going to start to think about some lighter things for the tail here let's see look at how that's mixing in there and it's really does it does make that darker gonna pick up some lights in the hair we also have to do some more stuff with the with his scale mail but we are trying to keep moving all across the surface here want to keep moving all across the surface I want to get bogged down in any one one spot. Now we'll do a little bit of blind blending in here. I just know that that cloak has to be lighter, but I'm just going to let the brush kind of do whatever it does. You can see it's picking up again some of that darker color that's already there. I'm looking at their two shields. I also want to get some lighter reds and on his shield here so let's just get these two lined up where you can see them and I'm gonna actually use oh, maybe a pinch of our yeah let's get to our fanchion red here that should be just about light enough for this shield oh yeah and remember that was essentially a red glaze that we put there and now that it's it's had a chance to be there for a while it's real easy to paint over the top of it without it and the paint covers no problem and even mixes with what's there you can see how that gets a little bit darker as it goes down by itself don't have to do anything So Drex, are you going to be doing a stream later tonight? I know that Jinx probably is going to be doing one. I'll catch you later, Roy. And again, it was uh, it was neat seeing your st uh, the post stuff you posted to Instagram there. It's looking really good. And I hope that you uh, keep having success. I'm not, I'm not. I'm going to go a little bit lighter, just a touch lighter here. Oh, actually, I can stick my finger on this because, well, that's dry. Maybe even go a little lighter here. Yeah. Okay, so Urkin ran and his red shield. We got those going. Now, let's see what we can do here in terms of our little sun design we're gonna see if there's anything left of our yellow ochre here there's not a bunch I might have to get some more again and we'll just start with this darker version of it and let's see what we can thinking it's going to start maybe here and this, we're just sort of hinting at it now especially because of all these crazy folds and everything else that's going on I'm just going to do the part that's the most easily recognizable here and you can see that that's basically all I can do I can draw that one little shape and I go back here gotta get the fresh paint Give the impression of another one. Do it again. Over here. Hey, now I, how are you doing? Uh, nice to have you back. Uh, no stream for Drax tonight. Yeah, Dra I have not. I I got the alerts for people like. You know, for for Drew last night and and Steep Tea and everything, and I just it's 
between either filming or doing whatever. I have not been able to watch anybody or actually even do any other streams myself this week. It, it's it's been it's weird because I you kind of get used to being able to see the usual people on the usual days, or at least maybe not the usual days, but at least just get to see them. Just again, trying to give that a hint. It is, it's all in the dark anyway. I mean, you can see even here, that's just again a suggestion. Now, let's see. This is, uh, there's another fold over here, and then yet another fold over there. And keep in mind, this is, we're doing the darker version of this right now. We'll get the, the lighter colors on top of this too. But we need to just we need to just kind of draw this out here. And remember, we can always make some alterations to this if we feel like it. Not while I'm doing that. How is about some lighter stuff going on with these? Yeah, lighter lighter stuff going on with our golds here a little bit of our faux cadmium yellow mixed with our white. Let me make sure that this is lined so you can see the two of them side by side. This is always, I kind of get a kick out of doing this, holding two figures side by side where we're trying to match one to another. I know I was doing that a lot with the, what, the Baratheons? Yeah, with the Baratheons. And now we're going to get uh, that that lighter gold that we did on, on this guy over on the other on Ur the other Urken brand, the one on foot. Oh, hey there, Valerfa, or, or Valfera, sorry. Uh, let's see, no, I was hanging in there, finally got all my oil supplies, and then proceeded to completely overthin the paints. Uh, I'm using this patch as all oh, pin lining glazes over my acrylic painted minis. Well, that's uh, that is a very inventive and ingenious approach right there. Yeah, no, why it can definitely happen. Like uh, when I was thinning out the interference paints to do to make the jar, so I could do this. It took pract. Oh my gosh, it took practically nothing. This might be thirty percent tops of the thinner maybe even less maybe 20 for 25 percent very little thinner in this thing to make the interference paint workable for for our tip you know what we typically do with the oils all right i think we got these two where you can see it we're going to do the same thing with some of our lighter golds in here hey d marino how are you doing I hope you. I hope you. Did you get to just see the uh, the brand new Osiarch miniature there that I just was doing uh, in the video last night that that had the interference paints that, that I used for the very first time. There was there was some hard lessons learned with the interference paints. That's that's for sure. But that that's what trying the new stuff is all about. Outstanding resin prints. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I do. I don't envy you that task at all. Oh, it's I'm doing well. I haven't seen them. Oh, well, it's uh. Here we go. So this is uh, the the brand new video that I'm gonna start uploading as soon as we're as soon as the session closes down here tonight. We'll be uploading this guy. I absolutely had a blast with this using those interference paints. Definitely learned a bunch of different things about them. I think the way I'll have to use them in the series, you may not even see them in episode no, three. No, 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 thanks for the thanks for the subscription. Thanks so much. Oh, do I need? Yeah, I need to get a little bit of this reddish color in here. Not radish, just reddish. 
But I think that, that what I learned is that it might be a better approach to use that when the area that you're going to be painting in is just completely dry. I think that was I think that was the lesson that I learned. It's not that I couldn't get it to go over the the wet existing paint like the pre-glaze. I I could do that. I ju it just seems like it liked it better. I might like it better if it's all just kind of dry there. And only one way to know and that's just to do it and see what the heck happens. So we'll we'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Oh, we need to get some, yeah, let's get some darks in this. Oh, we did want this to be more of a gold color too, so. We'll just hit that like so. Then a bit more yellow. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, that one, uh, that's part of the new army painting series. Yeah, I, got, I got some pictures, too, that you can see. So, here we go. So, it's uh, this is episode 2 of series 20. And that kind of gives you a little better better look at what he, he looks like right there. And that was just, uh, just painting the bone part alone. It was supposed to be an exercise in painting bone with oils. But, man... Uh, the the interference thing is something I'd never really tried before. It's basically like a color shifting oil paint. So Di Marino, you probably have already seen the basing episode. Uh, I have not posted that one yet because it still has to upload. I was still filming that at five o'clock this morning, so or something like that. So that is why it's not on the page just yet. Now I'm looking at, oh, he does have, okay. Wasn't quite sure what that was. And then I'm looking here. So the gauntlets definitely are not a gold. And even his his boots here, they got this reddish color, which, not a radish, but brown matter is just the trick. Yep, that's just the trick. That's what's over here. That's what's going to be here now. And then I think we'll just we'll lighten it up a, a pinch here. That's, I do like the that brown matter when you lighten it with the, especially something like the off-white yellow. You get sort of a neat, almost like a skin tone color. Almost a bit like a skin tone. Now what I'm going to do is just toss in these couple of lighter tones here, and then we're going to go back in with some of our darks. We know this has to be lighter. Can't tell if that's supposed to be an interior or exterior of that robe, so we'll just let it be. We also have to get some darker colors. I knew a sleeve. I just uh, looked at that and said, oh, okay. How's about a little bit of umber here? Maybe a touch of that ivory black and let's just do a little bit of our typical sort of glazy thing here boom so we're just touching the brush to that that's all we're doing just touch the brush to it that's all even here where we just did some paint see if we just touch the brush to that no problem we'll make even some of these not just darker but giving them a brownish tone. Instead of all that endless sea of just kind of bluish gray, to take away some of that bluish gray here. Uh, oh, hey, Grimgard, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. I think we're all caught up everywhere. Yep. Just lots of introductions and hellos. Now I'm going to have to put this one down so that I can actually get to that. I need to make a little finger tripod for myself. There we go. Do the same on this Hello, side. Little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Oh, thanks, Temo, for the follow. That is appreciated. Obviously, Gandalf appreciates it, too. 
and hopefully that you are doing well either either this evening or this morning because it's well it's even getting a wee bit later here I'm sure in in, in Europe it's in very much in the wee hours of the morning right now we will get a sneak in just a few darks here too on his as how it's starting to bring out some of the gold there. We're going to sneak in a little bit. Speaking of sneaking in, we're going to try and sneak in some more lights here. Again, doing some totally blind, well, nearly blind blending. I know you can't even see probably what's going on right there. I just need something or I can't have nothing. And same thing here on a, just some of the scale mail. Some of that is stuff that I just sometimes have to go back later and hit that. Oh, let's see. Let's take, I think we've got all our darks in place there now. How's about we take... Something like that. Let's start out with this. Got actually a little bit of a greenishness to it. And now, now we're going to try and get some lights on these little sections of the barding here. And look, we got some greens in here too. We have a little bit of our little bit of yellow in there from our ochre mixed with the uh, with the burnt umber. Obviously, this is so much easier. This part is a lot easier on those newer plastic sculpts that were done digitally or sculpted digitally as opposed to these these older metal ones. <laughs> but it's going to be, if there ever is a new Urken brand kit, we'll be waiting a long, long time. This is Lord of the Rings ain't Space Marines. So it's gonna it's gonna take a wee while to get it to to be able to refresh some things. I did learn something. Apparently, there's uh, certain characters and stuff uh, that was like they they can't do because it's oh it's not part of the. It's like a copyright thing, and there's just certain things they cannot do from certain parts of the, like the, oh, they couldn't have Kamul be, oh gosh, I forget which bat, I was like a weather top or something like that. They just couldn't have him there because it wasn't in whatever. It was like in the Silmarillion or something, so they couldn't use that, I guess. There was a lot of things that, their their choices about what they did as far as miniatures, characters, whatever, sometimes was just based on what the license allowed them to do. Ah, let me see. Let's see. You know, let's try some of our more recent chapters here for Grimguard, because we have some we have some new ones here. Here, let's. Go. They're in a whole different place. They're so new. Where there we go. And this is what we're doing on our horse. We have certainly, the last several sessions, we have respected the Umber. When I was doing that video with that, I almost called him a Tomb King. Umber was not just a part of the beginning, it was part of the end. And remember we had this conversation about less of the thinking, more of the doing. Because when you think, you don't do. Actually, you don't do anything. And diorama bases... There's just something about those diorama bases, whether it's large as an actual diorama or if it's just a regular miniature. So I, I can show you an example here. Hopefully I can reach these easily without too much difficulty here. So something like that. So we have ourselves a little dead soldier here down on the on the base. That's just a little something actually. Like we got the spear over here, the shield. That's just so much more fun than rock and static grass. I mean, well, we've got uh, like this right here. Some leftover vampire counts bits, a leftover shield there, some, some crackle paste. It, it, I mean, 
simple little thing like this, but it still adds so much to it. Let me get this down here one second. Uh, let me see. They didn't have the rights for either Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit to introduce parts of the... Yeah, it was... Okay, so that's what it was. I I don't remember what Lockie said, but it was uh, he was doing the re revelation or revealing of the that new campaign book that they did. Now this is this is gonna be tricky. These get really small over here, and I might have to even go back in with some of my darks too, but even that little bit makes a big difference right here but I couldn't hit this until all those darks were in place and this I'm not gonna say that that is yeah we'll do that a different uh, tone here we, oh, let's get a little bit more of our as much as I like the the brown matter I'm gonna get a little bit of this terra rosa in here that's kind of pinkish make it more pinkish Oh, let's see, I'm working on a huge diorama as a display for my Adara orc figures. Oh, those, uh, wow, those are, those are really neat figures. Grimgar, those, oh man, those are, wow. Yeah, those are, those are spectacular. And I'm, I can't wait to see what you do with them. I think those are going to be fantastic. I think we're, let's see. Oh, thanks, OSC. Uh, what you involved with the course of a paint job? Yeah, it's, uh, to me, it's really fun to just kind of uh, figure out where all those reflections are hitting. And it's funny because I'm lousy at puzzles and all those kind of things. But I, maybe in some ways that finding out where all the reflections go and the highlights and stuff, that's my version of a puzzle. But I'm I'm totally helpless at puzzles. You've seen the 2D art of that wolf, right? That was made into a puzzle, and I could not actually put that puzzle together. Kathy could. I think it took her just an hour or two, and she basically had the whole puzzle together. And I I couldn't do anything with it. But seeing the the non-metallic metal stuff, it just it's so fun to think, well, okay, there's there should be some green over here because we've got this green cloak next to it. Oh, but wait, now we have this over here, so let's let's shift this and get some purples into it. And kind of every every situation's a little bit different. Now let's see the thirty millimeter heroic ones. I have one peanut already, and it looks pretty good. Yeah, those Yadaro, that's, I, I saw those, it was like a month or two ago when I think I first noticed those, and I said, man, those are fantastic. Oh, geez, let's get these stirrups going here, what the heck? How the heck, how did we forget about those? Let's go back to this little Terra Rosa thing over here and hit a few of these guys. Make some of this a little lighter. We need some we need some flow to this now. I think we're all set. Yep, I think we got the chat all good. I'm even gonna get a little bit of heck reflected light on some of the leather here. I'll probably go back into some of that and uh just kind of wipe a little bit of it away with our blending brush. Or just this brush, which again, any brush can be a blend. Yeah, see, look at that. It's still there. We just took away a portion of it. Oh, let's see, a netted gravel resin printer. Yeah, I. <laughs> Yeah, you know, honestly, I still haven't had a chance to use that yet. Well, part of that is other certain situations came up. Uh, I'm still hoping to get that one going. But uh, I know Greg, he has used, I don't know what the name of his new printer is, but he is delirious at the detail of it. 
And, and I don't know if it's one of those things where it makes any of the ones like that I have or whatever like a piece of junk by comparison, but I have a feeling that it is significantly better. I don't know about the... I hate to use the word reliability, but, well, maybe I'll go into what's the word I'm looking for. Ease of use, user-friendliness, that I don't know. Because, well, when it comes to the 3D printing stuff, I am still very much just beginning at that. I know there's a whole bunch of printers that are supposed to be hitting soon. Uh, let's see, the Photon Mini 4K. Uh, frozen, okay. I just I have to well, I can always just ask Greg if which one he was which one he got, or just look at his posts. Cause he was in here with us uh was it over the weekend, I think was it the Saturday extravaganza that we were painting? One of his, uh, one of the ones that he did the supports on. Now we're going to get some of our lighter tones in here again. Uh, I need to work, oh, oh, for a present, okay. Now I have no idea how much those are. I, I think the, what was that, the LA Goo Mars, I think that was uh, like 230 or something, maybe 236. Now uh, it was sent to me, I, I didn't actually get it, so I don't know exactly what the price was. Oh, gee whiz, let's, uh, let's not forget some lights over here on our, on our metal. We gotta get that central, little central edge of that. Get the lower edge here, and now we need to do maybe even a pinch more. Where's there? Oh, yeah. That's a little bit of my brown matter that's gonna sneak into here. That's sort of an earth color. We're going to do the same over here now. You see, it just it makes that so much simpler, that, that whole process of doing that. Back over here to our titanium white to do the thing. Okay, I'm going to try and really build out that central line there as much as we can. Now that would see you just you only have to ask and it shall be given. And I mean like you say it ain't non metallic until it has magenta. And now it's got its magenta, which means now that's like the official stamp of approval, the magenta seal of approval on our non metallic metal there. We'll look at that nice little hint of it here, and then we're gonna get some some of this magenta now in some other areas. Let's get a little bit of the purple mixed into that. Actually, it's a fanchion red, and our, well, diazonine purple slash Egyptian violet. Oh, look, it's going to go over here now, too, because we just don't want these to be a sea of bluish gray. I will lighten some of these, but it's kind of like this weird grayish pink color. Which, of course, now makes that way more metallic looking. Got to get that metal everywhere. Not enough to just have some bluish gray on those those things. We got to get the got to get that magenta working in the metals. Got to get the green working in there. Full color of the rainbow. Full color me non metallic metal, not just not just partial color. We want it all. Where'd that oh that is the color I was using. I'm gonna also pop a little of that here too on that 
boss. Some on our horses there. I, I'm just going to guess that's his hair. Gonna throw in a, I'm going to have to get some of my off-white yellow out here, I think. I think that has been exhausted for the most part. Now and then we've got that, uh, that on us just, we're going to have to hit this too with, I think, some of our golds or something. I think we'll make some of these leather straps a little lighter. I think that's going to also lighten up our horse too. Yeah, it's uh, sort of like that's that last little touch right there, you know, in this in the sword like we've got here where we hit you hit that magenta in there just that last little bit. It gives it that that last little glint that it just doesn't have until you get that magenta in there. And here's a, this is another case where I'm just going to be drawing this stuff in because we filed away a good portion of all of the the texture here. I mean, we'll just we'll just try to lighten that here, carry this down, all about letting what's already there mix. Again, using a lot of the color that we're already putting in here. Now let's we got to go back the other way. In effect, we have to almost redraw some of this because again, it had to be pretty much just filed away. This direction, and then we'll have to go back in and, and paint a few more things too. Oh, let's see. Valfero went from FDM PLA to resin the last two months. It was a shocking learning experience. Uh, it's a lot of paper towels and disposable. Yes, yeah, siree. Uh, let me see. So let's see. Uh, they have lots of paper towels. You know, I, now, I was uh, using paper towels, and then someone was saying, "No, you have to. It's, it's a better idea to use Kleenex." I I think at this point it doesn't really, it's kind of too late. I think it's whatever scratches I put on the on the, the plate there from the paper towels, they're just going to be there and there's no point in screwing around. I'll just keep going with the paper towels at this point here. Now I, I do have, uh, fortunately I actually have a decent amount of the alcohol. Oh, I'm almost out of strainers though. That that's the uh, that's another reason why there's been a pause on the printing, because I think I have one strainer left, which means one false print or whatever, and everything gets shut down again. Anyways, and I haven't even actually tried to order those yet. I don't know if that's something that's cheaper to get on Amazon or just try and get them from Elegoo or something like that. Now I've got the, the with the horse right here. You know what? Let's see. Maybe I'm gonna go even a bit more with the Terra Rosa on the horse here. I was tempted to maybe go. You know what? Yeah, I think it, it needs a little more juice there. We have this ended up being almost more of a greenish leather than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, let's see. Amazon, look up automotive paint strainer. I got a hundred for fifteen bucks. Wow. Hey, I I hope I never need a hundred, but just with the way my look goes, I definitely could use a hundred of them. So, so automotive paint strainer. Oh, hey, Spidey, how are you doing? Automotive paint strainer. Okay. Because those those cone shaped ones that came with the ah, oh, see that's. Yeah, way happier with that. Those cone-shaped printers. 
or, or cone shaped strainers those are just well kind of a pain in the keister to try and use wasn't super happy with those so how are you doing spider-man uh, yeah honestly the that's what people told me is that uh the one is easier to set up obviously you don't have to worry about straining things and all that but obviously the other one's going to give you the detail and that sort of thing and of course i'm just visualizing the first thing that i try and print with the spool i always just call it a spool printer there's just literally going to be a, a big spider web of that the plastic thread everywhere that that's just my vision for what the first attempt is going to be like here let's get the uh that's the brown matter it makes a little bit of our white because i'm just trying to match the the gauntlets over here or bra eh, more like bracers i'm going to say more bracer than gauntlet And oh, that just adding almost some pinkish type color here. Just looking for some light and some separation. Uh, I've had that happen uh, when the hot end nozzle blew off the FDM printer, and you got that. Is there is there a sad name for for that particular phenomenon right there? Like a hairball. I don't know if that that if it has an official name yet or not, or if, if if I'm just missing things there. But I think I have seen pictures of fur balls that people post to Facebook with the sad face next to it. Or they look like uh, was it the balls of yarn? Not the spaghetti bowl. Now let's see. So the resin is much easier than FDM, except for the setup for supports in the slate. Yeah, that is the that is a bugaboo for for sure. Having to do the slices, and then I I don't know if there's more settings for one than the other. Like with the the uh, resin printers, you got exposure times and all that other kind of stuff. Let's get some lighter. Lighter things going in the sock here. Well, maybe we even give it a little bit of fur texture while we're at it here. Now you yeah, have the the critical fail. Uh, for me, with the the resin printer, the typical fails happen on the on that that larger stuff. Like I said, that this is the largest thing I was successfully able to print without having any of the the crazy shelf errors this is the biggest thing i've been able to do so far and i once i i did that i thought oh i'm good i got the settings down and then pff, all the other large stuff i tried printing after that was just a no bueno now we're gonna get the we're gonna get some of this green going in here i think too it's not really again it's not going to register as that it's just going to look like another grayish color here in the sea of these dragon scales or scale male I it may be it'll just be more obvious on some than others but we're definitely going to do it here because well it's right next to the green cloak so best have speaking of that whole figuring out reflections and all that kind of stuff certainly want to get some green in on these guys because well it's close enough to that cloak or even heck potentially reflecting some greenery on the ground too so we're going to sneak some up in here so we got the the magenta on the one side over here look at that it's our typical kind of magenta on one side look at that we got the light green on this side Oh, hey, Teals, how are you doing? Yeah, so folks, definitely give the uh, give Teals the follow because Teals has also, he began his oils journey last month thereabouts. 
I hope everything's been going good. Sorry I haven't been able to to catch anybody's stream basically for sure all of this week, and I'm not even sure I got to catch many last week. It's just been it's just been a little bit weird. So I do apologize for not being able to catch people's streams. All right, so I think we got our greens working in there pretty well. Now let's go back around to the shield again here. Let's get their shields side by side, and let's see what kind of little maintenance we need to do on these shields here. Let's see, the resin material, expensive. Oh, got a project starting on Sunday. Now, honestly, I've I've definitely been able to print a lot. It's the. Uh, it's really not the expense. It's act to me. It's actually really cheap. It it's the the time involved, and that it's now if I could just, basically, press play or press print and go. It would be a spectacular thing. Unfortunately, with all the failures, it means stopping everything cleaning everything and all the usual thing that that goes on with that because it, it's a spectacular for me anyways a great way to have a bunch of miniatures that are the size that I need and the scale that I need I'm gonna get some a couple of darker hints on that on the boss there too but I get we're just trying to do a little bit of tidying up here and some of these little freehand patterns. Just trying to get some of the darker stuff in the in the center of those not work patterns again. And I think yeah that that uh, again we don't want to get too crazy with it. That's not your that's certainly not the center of interest for that, but. Now it's a little bit clear, especially in this one part that's coming towards us the most. I think we could also use a couple of... Yep, for sure we didn't hit these. Mostly because I had the other miniature in my hand. I couldn't make my little finger steeple like this. see uh, which is why I'm sitting here standing and listening go to get them fitting so I can move to prep and paint yep I just I love the fact that that I could print one conceivably at 72 mil if I wanted to it, it might be pushing some aspects of that particular sculpt but the artisan guild ones for sure have definitely worked at at the 72 mil scale and they have a tendency to not have as much of the doodads on them which kind of makes them a little more fun to paint there's not a thousand belt buckles they tend to be devoid of belt buckles which makes me infinitely happy I believe on our that wild elf that we painted the other day he had I think two buckles on each of his legs let's grab him and let's see yeah there was two buckles there and there was two buckles there and that is the extent of the buckles so this is another 3d print right here again a large scale one had a blast with this and I get something to drink here real quick Don't mind me. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow, Troop Soar. That is appreciated. And well, now we have appropriate miniatures for our Gandalf welcoming sound. We're doing some Lord of the Rings here. Uh, at some point, I'll get back into the some of those song figs too. But we're just trying to kind of hammer through a couple more of our Rohan here. And 
Let's see. Yeah, this is it's really interesting just how cuz that was you know had a little bit of a glossiness to it. I, I mean, I'm going to maybe add some more of our some lights to the end of his sword too. And this is the one we were doing the other day. And then this is one that we just uh, not quite finished yet, but it was the one we were working on earlier here. Just trying to get the, more of these red shields ready for Urkenbran. Back to a little bit of this yellow ochre over here. Boom, right there. I'm just going to assume that's more of a... Nah, that's, it could be hair. It could be plume. I'm not quite sure. It could be both. I don't know. But I am going to go back into here with this bigger red. And you can see, I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do is just let the original pre-glaze that we threw in here mix with that lighter stuff that we did on the plume so that we can really, I think, come in here with some lighter lights and sort of finish off that plume there. Because we have sort of an off-white going on now. Let's really hit it with some of our titanium white here. There's very little, very few parts of this that has that kind of straight up titanium white. And I, I mean, even here, this is, it's significantly lighter than what was there. It seems like it's white, but it's actually not. Sort of the handy thing about the oils when you're, when it is wet into wet, it's going to be constantly picking up the color that's already there. So unless you're just, every single brushstroke is replaced by some kind of fresh paint, it gets dirtied up just enough. Now uh, let's see, is that Shield Scarlet or Crimson? And do you use any orange or yellow? Uh, both. Well, we did use a little bit of the Cadmium Orange. We also threw in a little bit of the, I think that was some of our Cadmium Yellow Deep on the shield there. It started out with a Cadmium Red Deep sort of a glaze to get that dark stuff in there in the first place. Just, yeah, get a couple of uh, lights on his, his bracer there. I'm not even going to call it a gauntlet. I'm just going to call it a bracer from now on until I forget and then call it a gauntlet again. I'm going to snag some of our, again, our cadmium yellow medium here. Let's see what we can put on this handle of his sword here. Just give that a touch of a warmer yellow I think there's oh yeah this this thing here too the, the rest of this could use some slightly lighter here and now we got to go with our some kind of that that greenish color it's gonna end up looking more like a yellow anyways Once that hits there, yeah, doesn't necessarily even look like a green. It's not not in the classic sense. Oh, let's see. Hobby cave time and happy place. Uh, oh, that's the other thing too. I guess the the one has a bit of a fragrance to it and some vapors, and the other one doesn't. That's the other thing too is I, I have to and one they, I thought only the one was gonna take a significant area, not the other, but they both kind of need a significant area. So I've got to move some furniture around. There has been no time for that. That's another reason why the printing process has been sort of shut down of late. Who knows, maybe, maybe is October, as we get further into October. 
or October, I guess as we're already calling it. Maybe I'll get a chance to do more printing now. It's, we're going to start drawing in the last of these. And we might have to go back in there and rework some of the lighter ones too. I don't want to do too much of this treating these almost like gemstones. But I, I'm taking a little bit that we're respecting the umber here. We are respecting the umber. We're adding a little bit of umber into this. Uh, you know what we need? Ooh, this is another thing that we could use on the side of that shield. We certainly need it on this side, too. I knew there was something. Yeah. Almost like that's that's reflecting the horse's uh, head there or just something. Let's get ourselves some kind of a bluish color here. And a little bit of our dragon scales there. Okay, now these we can go. I think we can get back into this and do some more lights over here, especially where we've got the these scales right along the side of his robe here. Uh, let's see. The, yeah, the spool is yeah that that takes a, a big footprint. Well, the other thing is uh well when there's screw ups, if it just printed fine every single time, I could practically just have it next to me here. But unfortunately, there's after about five or six prints max, something fails, and I have to dig my way in there. And start screwing around with stuff and making a big old mess, hoping I'm not spilling resin and stuff. So it just it needs its own space. And there was no area for a fan or anything like that. I tried putting a over oh, that one of those air filter type things. I'm gonna get some lights in here too, and then maybe even on the edges of his yeah let's do some of that okay let's see what we can do with his that little bit of design on his cloak there there's not a bunch there was maybe just a couple areas we might throw a few extra lights on here at least for now Where's that oak? Oh, there it is. Now, I don't want it to be a very bright yellow here either. Just get that a touch lighter. I think, yeah, that's it for that. Now this, uh, this area, let's just get that part of that little sun emblem. right here on the upper edge of this. So we're just trying to create impressions of it. Where the air it is. Even here we had to distort it a little bit because of all the folds, right? Uh, let me see. Uh, Al Capone asked Lady B what he's bottling up. Yeah, not Jay. It was, it was one of those... Uh, Not Spider-Man. Oh, Spider-Man fires the shots. The opening round here. There we go. I know there was a... Uh, what would do those... Oh, those level 5 hype train things. That got crazy. I think that happened on Thursday and Friday... Or Friday and Saturday last weekend. That was... That, that was active. There was a lot of stuff going on there. Now, we're going to do a little bit of... Again, reflections in here. We'll use this as a blending brush. And just blend some of that in. Now we're going to go the other way. Oh, what the heck. We are going to take a little bit of that cadmium scarlet. We'll mix that. 
with our burnt umber. Well, that's that's uh makes a dark rich color right away. Man, that didn't take much. Now that is more of a that orange because we, we got the cloak here that we're trying to sort of reflect down there. Also then, so that that kind of gives us that orange versus greenish gray, a saturated orange against a very desaturated gray. Now we've got this, some of our thalo blue. Uh, let me see, Troop Zor, I'm new here. Do you do any Warhammer? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So we did this one a while back. And you can <clears throat> you can watch this one on the YouTube channel. We did this in oil. We also have a couple of murder chickens here. These are also on the YouTube channel. We've got, here we go. So we also have the Cypher Lords that I did. And this is actually one of my Patreon series. So we did the entire faction there, all from basing all the way through. We've got, uh, this is the Untamed Beasts, right? Now we got Untamed Beasts also on the YouTube channel. So there's there's a whole bunch. I've done Splintered Fang, Cypher Lords. Oh, actually go back and watch. I think it was just last week we were doing the Corvus Cabal. So you can watch these. Uh, I think they're, they're still VODs. I'm going to also turn these into highlights. So you can check those out. Yeah, well, I think we've got three left in that faction right there. Oh, thanks, Troop Zor. Uh, oh, and this is the brand new thing. So I just finished painting this around 5 o'clock this morning. This was the color test figure for the Osiarchs right here. So the oils made this just a snap. And you can see, look at all those nifty little color, color changes that you can get in the bone. Some parts of this is almost green. Some parts of it's almost purple. So yeah, there's definitely, well, and here's a, this is a holdover from my old Lizard Man army. Sticky Wicket, whoosh, there he is, flying around. Good old Sticky Wicket. Nope, oh, speaking of other GW stuff. Now, this is my old sister's army. This is from 2014. And all of those vehicles were converted. That flag, that's just a piece of paper that I used. I can see a little bit closer there. Look at you got the old metal sisters. You've got a confrontation miniature. You've got some twenty year old literally <clears throat> twenty year old void miniatures there. There's the scratch made there's scratch built exorcist. And that was the wee little display board that we made for it. I think it was only three and a half feet tall. That was that was friggin' huge. Yeah interior lit up 39 stained glass windows and now this is the new sisters so we started series 20 this is the previous series before it also in oils doing the the non-metallic metal the object source lighting everything all with the oils and the, the basing just so much fun it's kind of nice to have the sisters back again Uh, let me see. Well, that's oh, yeah. The, like Teal said, there, there's what Peleus uh, spell brush right there. Yep, with the with all the things. Uh, let's see. Turn me into a newt. I got better though. Oh, thanks, Aussie. Now let's uh, let's see if we can't maybe engineer some more lights. On these little guys down here, well, we haven't uh, we haven't hit these with any of that brighter green yet either. So, well, it's more of a mid-tone green for that matter. Before we get down in here and really smack this with a couple of lighter highlights, I think over here. Uh, let's see, the mini trailer, that's a, a new Patreon series that I did. That's a new army painting series. That's series 20. Yeah, series 20. And that was that's from episode 2. Episode 2 is always a color test figure. So episode 1 is basing. 
So this is, uh, we did all the basing in the first episode. And then second episode, we did the color test figure. And then from now, from there, we get we get messy and we start doing the whole rest of the unit. There we go. We're also, well, we're going to be starting up the, the Necron series. We've got a series that we'll be doing on the Zinch Marines, on our uh, Rubik Marines. I think that is probably where we'll also see some more of the Interference Blue. I think with the Necrons, we are, we're going to not use the Interference Blue on that. We're going to use the we will use the, the the silver and such from MIG ammo to do our TMM. And we'll try the iridescent paint, I think, with the, with our, I almost said Klingon, with our Necrons to see just what that can do. Because it is all about experimenting as well. Oh, thanks, Mini Day Trader. Now, uh, when you when you do that, um, I will send you an email with all of the links. There are at this point, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 videos I believe to watch, because well, there's essentially close to 100 army painting episodes alone. There was 53 of the painting pyramid episodes. There's 54 workbench sessions. So right there, that's 200. There's 45 painting dark sword episodes. I know there's, I think, five diorama episodes. So yeah, there's there's one or two things to watch. It'll keep you a little bit busy. Oh, thanks, Nosferatu. too. Yeah, there is, uh, there's just a little bit going on. And it's not all oils. There's there's plenty of acrylics there. There's stuff with contrast. I did an entire army painting series in contrast paint. There's object source lighting. Tons of freehand. Here, let's keep up with a couple of our lights here. And then it has to kind of die off a little bit as that circles down this way. <laughs> it's gets a vast collection of knowledge. Or did did we say that that was uh oh yeah I think we said it was seven years of blooper reels because basically every it's basically every tutorial that I've ever recorded for the last seven years that is the Patreon page. Seven years of videos Which is kind of, it's weird because that seems longer and it also seems not so long. I don't know. At sometimes it feels like it was a million years ago when I did those. And not just eight or seven or whatever. Now I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to get a little bit of the blue into this. A touch, oh man, just a little bit more intense of a thalo blue, I think. Just right there. Yeah, just slightly right there. Uh, use them in the same fashion you would normal paints. Yeah, that's, well, uh, <laughs> greater than the Library of Alexandria. Yeah, that's, uh, well, and you can't burn this one down. So this was all done with the contrast paints here. Now, uh, actually, the tattoos were Leviathan and blue, and I just, I, I mix them with the lighter colors just like I would... I do with, say, the, the Reaper Clear and Liners or whatever. Actually, to me, to doing that stuff with the contrast paint is sort of a... It's a handy way to train yourself to use the oil paints. It really is. It's, it's weird. I think because, well, so many of the oil paints are transparent or translucent. So it sort of makes sense. Uh, let me see. Just started trying the contrast paints as I'm starting a Tyranid army. Yeah, now there's also, yeah, uh, I think it was uh, at least one 
I know there's the one series where that's that was really all about the contrast paints. I know there's some other ones where they they make appearances. I'm just letting a little more of that red work its way into here. Now this has a little bit of Terra Rosa in it. And let's, where's my where's my other Urkin brand? Yeah, as, as much as I love, there is no fold like this to, to work with, unfortunately, on him. So we won't be able to do some fun stuff like that, but that's all right. I think we're going to leave some other areas of the horse darker. We will get just a touch of light into his eye. I also, well, let's uh, get a couple of lighter things going on with this the horse's little face helmet here then got to figure out what's going on with the with the nose here the muzzle on this horse maybe instead of uh I don't, well, normally that, that ends up being almost like a bluish, grayish color on so many of the horses. Of course, all of them are, are gone because those all got sent off. So I have none of the Targaryens to show you, but, well, we'll be painting a bunch more of those. I'm going to try maybe a pinkish gray here. So we'll just take this, basically mix pink and black together, a pinkish gray. Yeah, that's okay. In some ways, it's a little bit like carrying what's going on with the socks here. And, of course, there, that's just too dark right there. We can't have it all that much light around it. And then all of a sudden, it just the, the shadow there is that deep and dark. That, that's not going to work. Oh, let's see. Best reviews uh, sparingly, and I get that. Oh, the start with Legion. That's right. That's something I've never... I haven't actually painted any Legion stuff yet. Spark my ganja. Well, thank you so much, One Ye Pete, for the follow. That's appreciated. Now, the the Legion figs, are, those are sort of like Song of Ice and Fire scale, right? They're a little bit on the bigger side, maybe 32-ish or something. I don't think they're 35s. But from, from what I've been told, they are a large, slightly larger scale. Uh, Spidey's been using them on his board games. Uh, as in Simon games. Oh, that's the other. Those are some of the other army painting series that are, I believe are not coming up. Uh, was that Blood Rage, Rising Sun? I have some of those, and I thought it could be interesting to just turn those into some army painting series too. So it is 32 to 35. Okay. Oh, there. See, ah, uh, see what we just did there. Sneaky little thing. We got some of our Terra Rosa down there. Nice little contrast to all the blue and, and such here. Any more thought on the primary symbol after painting the Osir? Oh, geez, no. It's uh, Unfortunately, it won't happen until I have a huge collection of the bits. That That's what's going to... Uh, now, I did see... What is it? Uh, this would... It, obviously, it has to be in a shape sort of like this, though. I mean, it's clearly got to be a shape sort of like this, for for sure. Something along these lines. That that's the one thing I know. I just don't want it to get too close to an Inquisition symbol. But but seeing this everywhere, uh, obviously this stuff is fun here. But well, look at that. Look what we got here, folks. We got ourselves some slow fuse. We have a monument slow fuse. Uh, how are you doing, Jason? Thank you so much for the raid. We are doing ourselves, uh, working on a few different things here. We've been working on some of our, some Lord of the Rings here. Doing our, our dark horse. And then we also were, we were throwing some, some stuff here on a previously completed horse just to kill the oil paint shine. So how are you doing? Yeah, we were, oh, this is a, this is something that I just painted last night in a new video. 
we are playing around on the well, especially the armor with the iridescent, not iridescent, the essentially like a color shifting oil paints because all of this is done in oil paints. And this was really a blast. I had so much fun with this. The oil's so much e so easy to get those uh, fun transitions and everything. Oh, hey, Lobeco. How are you doing? So, Jason, hopefully that was a fun stream. Um, and uh, folks, I'm sure you're already following Slow Fuse, but if you're not, follows are free. So be sure to follow Slow Fuse. So I, what kind of fun projects do you got going on? Speaking of projects, I know you had, well, you had the bolt action stuff. Then you had the, the quickie Space Marine chapter going on. So yeah, you have to let me know what you've been doing there because I've just been huh, locked in virtual events like ReaperCon and all that kind of stuff pretty much for the last several weeks. So I don't get to see anything but anybody. Now we're going to get a, a little bit of a horseshoe here. We'll do that. Just kind of start out with it being... So, and then we'll just a uh, couple lighter things there. We'll do the same on this foot here. Again, let that paint just do its own mixing. Now, doing a Necron and a Wonder Woman bust. Now, what? Uh, what's? Uh, that, it's not a Blackheart models bust, is it? Is it? Because I don't. I don't think he did. He didn't do Wonder Woman, did he? If he did, he's got some splaining to do. Because I got to get me one of those. Yeah. Oh, uh, what what size is it too? That's uh, I guess that's in it. Cause what the all the micro marts are what one eighth scale, or something like that. Yeah. Let's get a couple more. Let's get some blues in here. A little bit of a thalo blue. It's mixed with just a hint of our. White and it's just again, it's just a hint of that here. We don't need to overwhelm it, especially because it's well, it's sort of in shadow, anyways. Now we got our cerulean blue over here. Now it's not technically winter; it's close. It's uh, it's schmunderschmumen, I guess. Oh, no, not sure where. Yeah, that's uh, I know that feeling. The wind. Where'd you get that from? Well. I don't know. I have to say that all the time. With a lot of the stuff that I paint on stream, that's a, well, especially if it's a commission thing, and there, it comes with no packaging. That's a, and of course now with obviously, like you say, all the 3D printing stuff, it could be from just about anywhere. Now we're going to try and hit this once again with a couple of a couple of lights over here, if we can. This, just looking at my other uh, Urkin brand here. Also, yeah, I think we have to keep that white there. And also, I'm looking at the. At the scale mail here, I'm, now I'm looking at his at his helm. We could just use another little bit of light action in this too, especially up here, like so, and another little edge right there. See so a nice little edge there to bring that out, because we're again trying to think of the reflection of the horse essentially on this. Uh, a Scorpic Lord. Oh, the moderator said now. Let's do, yeah, a co couple of lights in here. Don't want that eye to get too light. I think we need to actually get, yep, we need to get some genuine Hello, darks in here. Spark my the eighth time. Thank you so much for the follow. As we grab some of our indigo blue, and I think that darker blue is going to help in some of the yes. So it's not just a matter of it being darker. It's also going to contrast a little bit with some of those reddish browns that are already there. 
Now, we have to actually get some darks here because that, it's like, yes, everything was a middle tone there. And I think it was kind of important for it to be this indigo blue here. Yeah. That's what it needed. And when in doubt, you, sometimes you just have to make it darker. You can highlight the snot out of something and just end up having no shape. Or you can just go endless mid-tones or something like that. But eventually, sometimes you just got to darken things. Uh, let's see, I caught your stream a few days ago when you're doing the under shading for the flesh tones. Uh, Indian yellow takes a lot of thinner. Okay, now Al, uh, I think that was, I actually looked at the Gamlin Indian yellow. But I'm, I don't know, something, something tells me by the time I can get to those that the sale's going to be over. Just like last time, remember? Something tells me by the time I can actually do those. You know, speaking of adding dark, let's do this right here too. Uh, not not a bunch. We're just adding a couple little these like triangle shapes in here. Yeah, see, because we got we got mid tones, we got lights. We don't have a nice boom right there. Uh, let me see. Uh, not Jay is still amazing how quickly you get these things painted. That the oils do help. You know, here's another thing that helps. So, Valfera wants to see film noir. And I think what could be a really interesting little thing here. Okay, let's do this. So, we'll have these two horses next to each other. And what we're going to do is we're going to take away all the color. Color is gone. Now, these two guys right here, you can see one horse is slightly darker than the other but they have all of their shading plenty of shading but we'll we've just removed all the color there's no red shield anymore but plenty of shading there no red shield here plenty of shading there now we're going to bring that color back like so and look at the big old difference between these two also this is another kind of little part of the exercise that we do when we do the film noir so there is value difference, right? The value contrast. What's light or dark? But here we got other things. We got color contrast, orange versus blue, right? Look at over here. You got that purple has a bunch of different colors. Blue. There's almost a pink in there. You've got this super saturated orange versus that blue. What happens? Foom. When the color goes away, you don't see those things anymore. But however, still plenty of shading. So when someone say you go to get uh, comments on your miniatures and someone says, well, push the contrast or boost the contrast or something like that, that is, think of that. Now here's another one again. And you, some of you haven't seen this one yet. When we bring back the color into this, all of a sudden, oh look, object source lighting. But you don't. You don't necessarily see that that color contrast. There's tons of value contrast, but this whole notion here of these oranges, the, the greens over here, so warm on this side, cool on this side. Even within this, you've got there's greens in there, some some reds, some yellows, and it just your eye looks at it and it just says, well, it's red. However, there's there's more. There's definitely more to it. Yeah, I'm, I was just about to grab the that, that dark sword figure that we always use, the wizard, uh, but he's gone. He got shipped off yesterday, so I don't have him anymore. So I've got to paint another one. But we'll be doing that one in oils. That'll be another part of the dark sword Patreon series. Uh, heck, it, actually, that will probably be dark sword forty five. Actually, yeah, that that will be the next dark sword one. I also have another Dark Sword diorama planned. But I do suggest you take your you just take your phone, right? You take pictures of your miniature like you always do. Thank you so much for that follow the defeated sandwich. Thank you so much. Just you know, take the picture with it with your phone and every phone's got some kind of a little app or whatever where you can just take all the color out of it. 
and I, I definitely suggest give that a try. Take a look at your miniature, see what it looks like. That's going to tell you more than anybody like I could. You'll look at that and you'll say, oh, okay, all right, well, let's let's do some more of this. Then take another picture of it. It's something that I started at ReaperCon. Uh, actually, it was last year when people came up to me. Obviously, they wanted some critiques on their miniatures. And I said, well, do you mind if I throw it on camera here? And I did that same thing. I turned it into black and white. I just looked at them. Oh, we need to reflect some green over here. And they said, I'll be back in 15 minutes. They went, they went back. They did some painting on their stuff. See, yeah, a little bit of green right there. They came back. They looked at it. And they said, give me five more minutes. And they went away. They came back. And I didn't have to say a word. I said nothing. They just they looked at their stuff on the screen in black and white, and they said, oh, okay, yeah, let me fix this. Let me add something here. Speaking of adding something, we're going to add a little bit of green right here, right along the side of this, because, well, we have all that red there. How's about a wee bit of contrast from a touch of green there on that side? I don't think think we want that any lighter. No, we don't want that any lighter. We've got this crazy bluish gray that we're throwing in here too. As we sometimes call it, the, the faded ultramarine of oils because it's so darn close to that color. It's just weird. Not so much, well, I guess out of the container it sort of looks like it. I think it looks a lot like it, but it's just that the, the Faded Ultramarine does, it has a really unique effect on other colors. And you can have something that looks just like it, but it might not have the same effect on other colors. It's just the, the other pigments that are mixed in there when you hit it with other things, or even just mix it with white. It just does, that's why Faded Ultramarine was, it was given such power and given its own chapter in the Book of Wapple because of what it could do as far as changing other colors that it's mixed with. See, we got our little brighter thing. We got our magenta on this side, some green down here. Do we need to do the same on this side? We sure do. We'll just bring out that. Central and again, magenta over on this side, green over on this side. That is, those are virtually the same value. So if we were to take that color away, like this, you see those the two sides of those swords are uh, a sword is identical, as far as the value goes. But when you push the your color here, you got magenta on one side, basically a greenish color on the other. Now we've got. I mean, even here it is the same thing. We have all these purples and greens and yellow, but look at the green up there. It's cool green, warm green, kill the color. Well, you just got value contrast now. Some parts of those tassels look darker than others, but you don't see the yellow greens. Let's bring back our color again, like so. All of a sudden, I mean, that value didn't, that just was a gray. All of a sudden, now it has that little bit of blue, you can, or a greenishness to it. You can see some of the greens and the golds, bluish green there, a yellow green down there. I think we're utilizing some jade for a lot of those greens. Uh, let's see, to have light saturated colors, you just have to bite the bullet and buy the tubes of those shades. Uh, to, let's see, they have the light saturated colors. Well, I mean, these, I just call these the faux cadmiums. These, these are not too shabby right here. And remember, this Fanchon Red has a punch to it. And this is not a super expensive, this is in the starter set, that Williamsburg starter set. 
Um, you can see it's got some that's got some kick to it as far as a red goes, and it's also opaque. Remember that. So I, you know, you don't necessarily have to go for the full-on, you know, thirty-something-dollar tube of this. It does depend, obviously. Well, here, let's look at these two things. So murder chicken here, that was done with the acrylics and fluorescent paint. This is oil paints, basically barely any fluorescent, almost none. Look at the intensity of the oils. Now, of course, oil paints are just more intense anyway. It's just kind of a natural thing, but there is a difference there. I was shocked. I just happened to grab this thing to show somebody, and then I went, I showed it next to this, and I went, wait a minute, there's a difference. I had no idea there was even a difference because I only really ever looked at the pictures side by side. I saw that and I went, uh oh, wow, okay, that's that's something to make a mental note of. There's a big difference. Speaking of a big difference, we're actually going to use a little bit of that. Here, just a touch of that cadmium yellow. This this is the faux cadmium yellow light here. It's mixed with some of the cadmium red. Find ourselves a little spot on the palette here. And I'm just going to sneak in a little bit of my orange here. Just a couple of little, just a couple of dabs of it because it is so intense. Uh, I don't know if that really needs to be a goldish color. What? Uh, oh, on his horn. Let's do a little bit on the horn here. Let's actually get a little bit of that on that on the reins, and then we got to go with some greens on these things too. I think. Oh, hey, Nalaski, how are you doing? I just know why I say the murder chicken is so sad. So in Alaska, it's got to be, wow, it's got to be early for you. It's only 524 in the morning over there. So thanks for joining so early. Oh, Lady B is back. Oh, Lady B, uh, did you, uh, you got that, uh, that abstract piece? That one's all done now. Right, the one you you showed me the pictures of there, or with, not showed me the pictures of you on your Instagram. Never mind. I was like, no, wait a minute, that was that was on her Instagram. That just popped up in my Instagram feed. Uh, let's see, white will pastel, lots of color. Oh, yeah, just like a. Uh, oh, not Jay has to take off. Well, not Jay again. Thanks for thanks for joining, and a little toast for you there. I shall see you next time. Uh, let's see. So, like Al Capone was saying there, if you're going to lighten things up, where's my? Aha. Uh -huh. So, so if you want to lighten things up, like well, red or green. See, this has a little bit of a tint of yellow to it. This has obviously some more. So, especially with reds, right? Now, think of, you've seen some of the the acrylic ones that I've done. Well, these are my off, these are my whites. See, that's got a little pink to it. That's got a little blue to it. Always have, just not instead of white, have some kind of kick to it. Nah, I just woke up there, okay. Well, it also, it, it does depend, too, what you're hitting with the yellow. So if, if you're doing, you know, something with the greens, obviously if you add a, just a straight-up white to it, that is going to make it more of a, like a bluish green. The, the yellow is going to make it more towards the olive green. Uh, let me see. I think we're all good there. Yeah, we're all caught up now. This horn also needs some reflected light. Uh, 
Oh, we're also going to... Gee whiz, we need some reflections here. Quite literally, I have to reflect some of the horse's fur onto the inside of that armor plate right there. Yes, we did. We just did that. Uh, let me see. So, uh... I'm just losing where we're at here in the stream. So, oh, it's annoy. That's, uh... It also depends to like, what what's your what color is it that you're looking to lighten basically, and it also depends what's around it. Obviously, with the now, are you looking to do object source lighting? Because if you're adding white to your object source lighting, that's just going to that's just going to nuke it. Unfortunately, sometimes you're almost better off with the object source lighting. Where you just you start lighter, and then you glaze darker. So you would you would almost maybe start with the brightest of your yellows here, and then start to put glaze your oranges over the top of that. Because when you mix the white with the orange, or even the yellow with the orange, right, it does kill it a little bit. Now up here. See, we got some green over here. We got, we just had some yellow over here, so we're gonna go back into crazy. Not, we're taking this sort of a basically a, a kind of a warm grayish green. Yes, that's going right in our leathers because look at we got this the Terra Rosa color here. We actually have some yellows over here. Why the green? Because it could be. Popping some of that. Could be getting some of the stuff from the ground over here. Uh, I was just noticing with the oils that the starter set is mostly dark shades. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm going to talk about an off-white yellow. No, it's a brilliant yellow pale. This was in the uh, starter set of the Williamsburg. There's This is kind of a dime a dozen. There's a million of these. I was actually thinking of getting like a blue version of that. Actually, uh, Gamlin had a couple that I was thinking of getting because of their nifty sale. Again, just have not had a chance to get those. The I had to ship so many boxes this past week, well, the past two weeks, that pretty much all of the PayPal funds went to shipping stuff. Because, well, some of these, like the $60 box to Australia... Or fifty-four dollar box to Australia and stuff. Yeah, that's where, unfortunately, that's where some of the paint funds went. As we had a little bit more of our green right in there. Oh look, it's gonna go over here too, and it's even gonna go onto the hooves over here. Cause we can do that. Yeah, I just I kind of get tired of saying the name, and to me it is just it is nothing more than an off-white yellow. It's certainly I used it quite a well. It's actually, that mixed with the Terra Rosa makes a really nice skin tone, and I I don't know if uh, I think you've seen the that color mixing video that I did. I'll I'll try and get that out to the subs and, and such maybe later tonight if I can like I said there has been a number of distractions this week for sure ah see a little bit a little bit light all of a sudden that's starting to get a little bit of sweep to it here it's it's rough with these old Lord of the Rings figures I mean these things are ancient this, this not just the sculpt but this miniature I'm sure was was manufactured 16 17 years ago and I can still go lighter here yeah look at that see that white still has an effect there because we do have some of the thalo blue sitting there boy I keep wanting to dip into that interference color good grief I should just scrape that off the palette Cause that is driving me nuts having that sitting there thinking that it is my uh, my 
that little off-white blue that I made. All right, we're back into this orange because we want to get a little separation here. Where's my, ah, there's my umber. We're going to get some stronger separation here. Yeah, I just was looking at the other Urken brand, and that's about what we did on him with his helmet there. Where'd you go? Yeah. And yeah, this one was painted in acrylics. You can catch this one. I did this in a YouTube Live back when they still would let you do those without going nuts away on you. So yeah, you can check this one out on the YouTube channel. We are now doing this one in oils here. Yeah, Dr. like Dr. Feedgood says that that Naples yellow uh I know not the Al, Al has that too. It, it's one that I kept I kept considering too. Now I'm going to get some green onto that trap. Why? Because well we've got this reddish brown color here on his neck, so that green is a way to make it stand out without making it a, a lot lighter or darker one way or the other it's remember there's the color contrast there's value contrast but you can quite literally have two colors the exact same value literally just as light or dark as the other but if you've got two different colors big difference strip needs a little hint of blue in it too Light on these guys. Hello, yep. little hobbits. Spark my gun. Thank you so much, Roger, for the follow. That is appreciated. Gandalf appreciates it too. Now that's a, okay. We got our we got a little bit of a line here, but if it gets so let's say it gets too thick or something. Oh, look at this. We just uh, we just shaved some of that away. That that's the other thing I do like about the oils. If you have something where it's like ah that wasn't quite what I wanted, it can either wipe it away or you can manipulate it, push it around, change it. And you can do that with the acrylics, but in general, it means painting over it. Whereas with the oils, it just means kind of using what's already there. Speaking of, I uh, would like to would have liked to have some of the brown matter alizarin. Well, brown matter, not brown matter alizarin. I know I keep saying that. Ah, now that this is getting closer to the green cloak, I am going to actually shift that to some of these more towards that terra rosa, just to get a little a little hint of contrast with some of that green. Little hint of contrast. Oh, what the heck? I might even throw a little bit of that reddish brown into his tail. Oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Naples yellow. It's, it's one I've been given a thought to. I suppose at a certain point, I just kind of get tired of having a bazillion different colors. Well, I don't really have a bazillion different oil paints. I don't really have a bazillion different acrylic paints. I have like 20 of them tops. That's it. I, I Actually, I, I might even have more oil paint colors just by virtue of all these experiments that we're trying to do. Which is kind of hilarious. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I do have more oil paints than acrylics now just because of trying all these different uh different brands too. Now let's get let's get out this brown matter over here. It's almost like a gosh, it's almost like a black and a no not quite black and a lizard and crimson. But remember the one Song of Ice and Fire horse that we did? We did a couple of those with really featuring the brown matter very strongly and those were spectacular. Really love those. It's a color that has 
sneaky kick to it. It's also it's good in those opening stages for your your prep glaze. Now here just it see we need a little more turn right there. So we just we darken that down not quite to the degree maybe that you might for something that's supposed to be non-metallic metal because it's a softer surface. You don't necessarily have to have these super high contrast there like you like you would say with something that's a non-metallic metal. I might know I don't think I I thought I had to get some more of my titanium out here but I think we got some right there. And we're really going to punch up some of our golds here and also too on the the helmet here boy there's there's a little piece of trim here that's going to be interesting however the oils make it easier to get at those little small things because oil well it's thinner than water so you just you thin it just in, <clears throat> just enough and you'll be able to just do so many smaller details with it couple of lights on the side of our of our horn there I don't really remember if the horn was had any kind of a gold trim on it or it was just sort of that leather kind of trim it's sneaky that way with Rohan they combine the metal and leather so often now here's another case where the brown just there's nothing happening right here Yes, it's dark. But it also needs to be dark and a color. I'll just get sweep a little bit of my see a little bit of that mid tone. That's again that brown matter that we just threw over there. Now the the hooves over here, we want to Get a, or just a pinch of this. Yeah, it's almost like a bluish gray right here. And it's still mixing with that pre glaze that we threw down there hours ago. Okay, let's complete these and let's maybe get a little bit of ochre into. Now nah, that's good. Well, what the heck? Let's see what sort of a gray. Yeah, that's a. Decent little warm green out of that. Here, I want this to be almost more of a bluish gray. Oh, we haven't actually grabbed any purple yet, so why not? You can see there's uh, way more mixing that happens on the miniature than on the palette. The palette's just, uh, it's literally just a paint storage device. The miniature becomes your palette. See, there's not a lot of color mixing that happens here. We're just basically saying, okay, I need this color. We take it over here, then we mix it over here. Actually, I'm going to take this crazy grayish color here. And that's going to go into some of these greens down here. Also here in this dark shadow area. Yeah. But it's all it's all it's mixing on its own. I'm just gonna take that was some of the uh, Van Dyke brown that I just took there, and I just I just took it straight over to the miniature. I did not. There was no mixing of anything because mix here. I mean, this is where this is where the action is at. I learned the hard way. That was this was at. Gen Con last year. That's when I realized all the palette miniatures I've painted. Thousands of palette miniatures. I would much rather paint miniatures. Not You can't play games with palette miniatures. But what you can do is take that burnt umber, do a glaze with it, and get some nice separation. Because with that blue there, now by virtue of doing that, oh yeah, look at this. 
See how we put that in that plume there, and that just gave that a little extra light, but look at it's mixing with what's there. You can see that lighter color is on the brush. This is the fun part of the oil is that that glaze went in there, and now we didn't just manipulate it. We were we were truly painting with it. Ah, yeah, look at the. You can see the, the lighter color on the end of the brush there. Look at all that. So much smoother there instead of the kind of the harsh, see that harsh line we got right there? Well, guess what? We're going to do the same thing. Same thing everywhere along here. Now you got that little hint of the um, look at that. That looks like a nice that looks like a nicely blended thing there. It was just like one brush stroke. Boom, done. All done. Now let's see. My art instructor preached two things: darker, 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 and your canvas is your palette. Well, another place where I really wish I had the oil paints. I really wish I had the oils, like just like the Tomb Kings, right? This is another place I would have loved to have oil paints. This thing, painted with the oils, that was that was real interesting. Trying to get all of those blends, those smooth blends with the acrylics, with the oils, it just would have happened by itself. All those stupid gemstones on there, whatever those spirit stones, that would have been a heck of a lot easier. All of these things. So much easier it would have been if I just had the oils, but this was 2012, I think. So yeah, I didn't have oils when I did this army. This was, uh, and you'll see here's the, uh, there's the display board. That was my, that was my 2013 uh, Adepticon tournament army right there. Really wish I had the oils for that. That could have been so much fun. And again, this is my. So think here. There's your new. Ossiarchs, let's see if we can uh, find you the Tomb Kings here. We'll give you a bonus here. <clears throat> so there's my Tomb Kings army. That little little project there. That was my 2014 Adepticon Fantasy Tournament army. And yeah, that's you can go to the blog and see the 117 posts. But look at this guy. You see the kind of the changing of the colors. Look at those horses. The skulls. One is almost green, one's almost orange, one kind of is more yellowish. All of those transitions and all that bone, oh, that would have been so much easier with the oils, like I was doing, you know, this guy here. So much easier with the oils. Uh, let's see, I think we're, yep, we're all set on, on the chat. Well, we need some more darks in here. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to take that same burnt umber and I'm going to let that do its, again, its little, do its own little thing here. Let it mix by itself. I know that that can be a scary thing for some folks. I'll let that get darker too. I think we're good on, I'm going to actually make the nose maybe a, a touch more on the brownish side as well. Maybe even, yeah, uh, the bridal here. I think a couple of these just need to be darkened a touch. So we're just letting that mix do its thing. And when in dark, doubt go darker, and that's what we're going to do right. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of adding something lighter there, and I said, now, nah, why don't I try darker first? And sure enough, that was exactly what I needed to do. We'll just hit a couple of darks up here on his helmet, maybe. And maybe even just to knock down some of these. Maybe even, yeah, I'll do that on the other side over here. I'm just literally taking this brush and just sort of scumbling again. Now that's almost a, like a grayish color there. On uh, Again, on our leathers, it doesn't always have to be just plain old brown. See, we're kind of pushing these colors together just a wee bit. And now it looks like, see, some of these have more sparkle on them because they're catching more light than some of these. Just kind of get dimmed down here in the shadows. 
not everything the same. Again, some of that catches light over here. Some things catch light. This stuff, maybe not so much light.